Good morning. Today is Thursday. Wow, that's really loud. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. Today is Thursday, June 22nd, and this is the time and place uh, for the regularly scheduled Nevada Gaming Commission meeting for the month of June. If you would please uh, stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, individual, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Madam Secretary, has our agenda been posted in accordance with the open meeting law? Yes, it has. Okay, at this time, I would like to remind anyone coming to the podium to speak that uh, you we ask that you speak directly into the microphone, speak as clearly as possible, as this meeting is being transmitted electronically and also being transcribed by a court reporter. Madam Secretary, if we could please proceed with our first agenda item, public comments. This item is placed on the agenda to give the public an opportunity to comment on gaming related matters. All right, anyone who wishes to address the commission may do so at this time. Matters brought to our attention during public comment cannot be acted upon, but we're happy to hear comments of the public as well as my fellow commissioners. Comments by all will be limited to three minutes as a reasonable time, place, and manner restriction. If any of my fellow commissioners or myself ask questions of the public, the time needed to address those questions will not be held against those time constraints. If you uh, have any handouts or copies of your comments to provide, uh, please uh, provide them to the enforcement agent who will collect them from you. And I will first go to Carson City. Is there anyone present in Carson City wishing to make public comment? Please step forward. I don't believe there's anyone present wishing to make uh, public comment in Carson City. So here in Clark County, if you would please step forward and state your name for the record. Hi, uh, Diamante Asbury, D-I-A-M-A-N-T-E-A-S-B-E-R-R-Y, here on behalf of the Culinary Union. Good morning. Mm -hmm. um, employee benefits are vital to the everyday life of gaming workers and their families, and a holder of a Nevada gaming license should not discriminate against employees when it comes to benefits. Last month, we explained to members of this commission um, how Station Casinos discriminates against employees by denying benefits to some while providing benefits to others. Last December, the Culinary Union agreed as the elected representative for a bargaining unit of workers that Station Casinos should give the set of new enhanced benefits to all um, represented workers at Sunset Station, Green Valley Ranch, and Red Rock Casino. Uh, but the company still has not done the right thing and has just given these new benefits to non-union workers. In 2016, workers at Boulder Station voted to unionize, and the, right, uh, the night the ballots were counted, we learned those workers would be subject to company discrimination. Uh, what happened was Boulder Station workers' health plan costs were kept at one level, while um, other Station Casinos employees' health plan costs were reduced. Um, how could they do that to families and why would they subject employees to unequal treatment? The following year, Station Casinos agreed to a settlement related to this matter at Boulder Station. Part of the settlement saw the company agree to the federal government calculating the price tag of Station Casinos discrimination. Station Casinos paid just over $216,000 to make Boulder Station workers whole by providing them with the same reduction in health plan premiums that were granted to employees at its other facilities. The company paid Boulder Station workers for the difference in payments between the higher Boulder Station health plan rate and the lower amount paid by employees at other company properties. Station Casinos discrimination against Boulder station cost those workers avoidable hardship. The company eventually paid for what they did. Now Station Casinos is again discriminating against workers at Sunset Station, Green Valley Ranch, and Red Rock Casino, uh, and we ask you to tell them to stop this discrimination and grant benefits to workers on an equal basis. Thank you. Sir, if you could step forward. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Jaco Jimenez. Okay. And I come over here because uh, I work for Boulder Session 25 years. And uh, due to the COVID, they closed it down the buffet, promising us and they were going to go back to it. But we never did. I mean, myself, I never did. I'm, I'm, I'm still here because uh, I'm hoping if they're going to give me uh, back to work. Uh, it's not fair, 25 years serving then and just kick me out of there. I was not uh, ready to retire, but I had to get my retirement and everything. I live in 
and the poverty because I get not only my social security uh, benefits, but uh, I, I, I please him to them to get me back to work. I don't want to live like this. This is, this is not fair for the 25 years I worked with them. Uh, that's all I got to say, please. Do Tell you, them touch their heart and do so for, for me, for all my other work, uh, co-workers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Could you do me a favor? Could you spell your first name for our court reporter? Pardon me? Could you spell your first name for our court reporter? Oh, uh, Jacobo, J-A-C-O-B-O. -O. Thank you. And did you have a statement that you wanted us to have? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, could you hand that to our agent, please? Thank you. Is there anyone else present that wishes to make public comment? All right, uh, it does not appear there's any uh, additional persons that have stepped forward to make public comments, so that will close our public comment section. Thank you. Madam Secretary, the next item on our agenda is the approval of the prior month's disposition. Pursuant to NRS 241.035, this item is the consideration of the approval of the Nevada Gaming Commission dispositions for May 2023 and the special meeting held on May 12th, 2023. Okay, um, I believe, um, and I'll just confirm with the AG that uh, if I have reviewed the meeting that occurred uh, in my absence, that it is appropriate for me to um, vote on the disposition of um, those matters, correct? Yes, that's correct, Chair. Okay, so obviously I was present at the special meeting on May 12th, um, and so at this time, uh, we've all had an opportunity to review it. Is there any discussion on, or does anyone have a motion for the approval? I, thanks, thank you, Chair. I move for approval of the disposition of the special meeting held in May and the regular meeting held in May 2023. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And it appears there are none opposed. And for the record, I did have uh, the opportunity to review the um, video of the meeting um, and therefore participated in the vote. Thank you. Madam Secretary, could you please read in the non-restricted non consent items? Your item on the non-restricted consent agenda this morning is item number 10. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for... Okay, uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments on the consent item? There being none, does anyone have a motion? Thank you, Chair. I move for approval of non-restricted item number 10 on the consent agenda as recommended by the Gaming Control Board and is read into the record by Madam Secretary. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor, say aye. 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 And there are none opposed, thank you. Madam Secretary, could you please read in the restrict, restricted consent items? Your items on the restricted consent agenda this morning are items four, five, eight, and nine. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. All right, um, to my colleagues, does anyone have any questions or comments about any of the items for five, eight, and nine. Does anyone have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, restricted agenda items as read by Secretary Rupert into the record. And um, that motion is for the recommendation with the conditions as noted on the agenda. Is there any discussion on Commissioner Kolicki's motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed, thank you. Uh, that brings us to the non-restricted items held out for discussion. Madam Secretary, I, uh, if you could read uh, in the item continued from last month, non-restricted number 13. Non-restricted number 13 is the application of Paul Salem for finding of suitability as a director at MGM Resorts International. Recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Tagliati, Commissioners, Executive Secretary Rupert. For the record, Sean McGinnis with Butler Snow on behalf of MGM Resorts International. To my right is Paul Salem, Chairman of the Board of Directors of MGM Resorts International. Also in the audience is uh, Pat Madamba, Senior Vice President of the Legal Council uh, for MGM Resorts International. I uh, appreciate you uh, bringing this forward at the beginning of this meeting since it was uh, from the, the May, May calendar. Uh, I thought if it would be acceptable to you, I would just turn it over to, over to Mr. Salem and he could provide a little background of his 
of, of himself, and then we could open up for questions. Please. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Um, my first agenda item was a different one, and so I think I have a, a disclosure to make. One moment, please. Sorry, things are out of order for me. Um, but MGM is an MGM trademark and is a subsidiary of MGM International and Nevada Property One LLC, where the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas um, is a client of Luce Roca, the firm where I'm a partner involving intellectual property matters, in which matters I'm not personally involved. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item, and I do not believe the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record, and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. Pardon the interruption. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much for having me here today. Uh, my name is Paul Salem. I'm chair of the board of MGM. Uh, I grew up in Massachusetts, uh, grew up playing ice hockey a lot. So I'm really jealous of your Las Vegas Golden Knights. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. We're very proud. Um, it, it's amazing what you've done in six you years. That's great. Bruins. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> Bruins fan, but now I'm a Las Vegas Golden Knight fan. At least they, make, they gave me a jersey. Um, and uh, yeah, I grew up in Massachusetts, went to Brown University in Rhode Island. Um, uh, worked for Prudential Insurance Company after college, worked, uh, went to Harvard Business School, and then helped start a private equity firm called Providence Equity Partners in Rhode Island. I retired from that a uh, few years ago and uh, joined the board of MGM and uh, been on the board since 2018, um, became chair uh, March of 2020, which was not the most fun time in Las Vegas. Um, and uh, But we did get through it and the company's doing great. I am really excited to be part of MGM. Uh, I have four amazing daughters and um, uh, they're all the ages between 17 and 22. So they keep me busy, but uh, happy to answer any questions. Well, first of all, thank you very much for being here. Um, I know our process and our multiple tiers require some repetition and multiple appearances. And, you know, we understand that's, you know, taxing and inconvenient, and we really appreciate you being here in person. So um, I will open it up to my colleagues for any questions or comments. I have no areas of concern. I think uh, you have an impressive background and I'm sure you're a valued asset to the board. So you have a very clean record and it's nice to meet you in person. Thank you so much. I also didn't have any areas of concern with your application. It was very clean. You, uh, you have an impressive resume. Um, I was curious, uh, you retired from the Providence Equity Partners that you started uh, and you're now, do you, do you still have some kind of role with them? It listed that company again in your bio. Yeah, I'm, you know, um, as one of the, you know, original founders, um, I, I don't have any operational responsibility, but I have, you know, a lot of investment with them and all the people I hired on the firm now. So they do, they do actually call for advice sometimes, but, but not as much as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job training them, I guess. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any other questions. I, again, I mean, your, your application was very clean and we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Mr. Salem, welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you, meet you. And as Madam Chair said, I know the logistics of uh, being in front of multiple gaming regulatory bodies is not always the most convenient, but appreciate it. Um, certainly no questions, just very impressed by your background. And for the record, I was born in Warwick, Rhode Island, and dad's from Providence, uh, Eric Gansett, lots of family, and Brown University was part of the family a tradition, not mine. <laughs> but uh, you come from good stock and good country. And uh, again, I, I just... You've certainly been part of the MGM world for several years now, but uh, welcome and, and congratulations. I have no concerns or issues with this application. Thank you. Um, I would echo the comments of my colleagues. Uh, we appreciate you being here today. Um, I believe um, we have a very <laughs> thorough background investigation by our staff and there was zero uh, concerns of any kind. And um, you know, I'm happy to support your application and I appreciate you being here today. Thank you. So is there a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I move for approval of uh, non-restricted item number. Do we still go by 13? 13. 13 is read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the Game Control Board. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a good appreciate day. It. Sorry. Oh.
All right, um, Madam Secretary, if you could please read in non-restricted number 14. Non-restricted number 14 is the application of Stephen Sutherland for licensure as a key executive at Konami Australia Pty Limited. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval. I believe we have a recusal on this item. Thank you, my esteemed colleague from the law firm of Lewis Roca is here today, so I have to recuse myself from the matter. Good luck. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Chair Togliatti, members of the commission, Madam Secretary. For the record, I'm Glenn Light with the law firm Lewis Roca, and I'm accompanied at the podium by the applicant, Stephen Sutherland, who is the managing director of Konami Australia. Um, also in attendance is Laurie Oak, who is the Vice President Regulatory Compliance for Konami Gaming. Uh, to begin, we would like to thank the Commission for agreeing to reschedule this matter. Um, as you're aware, Mr. Sutherland is a long-standing licensee in Nevada with a stellar reputation. He has been a member of Konami Gaming's executive team and served on its board of directors for over 20 years. Uh, for the last six years, he has served as the CEO and President of Konami Gaming. And the application today is for licensure as a managing director of Konami Australia Limited, which is a subsidiary of Konami Gaming. Uh, we don't really have a, any affirmative presentation other than that, but uh, happy to answer any questions you may have. Well, good morning. Thank you for being here. Good morning. I'm going to be saying a lot today that we appreciate, you know, you appearing uh, multiple times and the inconvenience associated with that. Um, and what I'd like to do is open it up to my colleagues for comments or questions. Welcome. Thank you. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, welcome and thank you for being here. Um, we appreciate meeting you in person. And although we don't often have a lot of questions about your background, having you here um, gives us an opportunity to at least put a face to the name no, I and meet you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, like your day-to-day -day responsibilities with the company? Day-to-day um, -day responsibilities. I have um, six direct reports that go across globally and they manage the day-to-day -day operation of the business. I'm responsible for setting the um, strategic direction and making sure that we're moving forward, you know, in that direction. Likewise, we have a foreign parent that's Japanese. There's a lot of educational components and interface that I need to do. And I've been um, managing through, you know, that field since um, calendar year 2000. So it's um, going on a 23 year career with Konami. But that between those two areas, um, that's the major component of the role. How much time do you spend at your various uh, locations? Um, Post-pandemic-wise, post -pandemic I'm heading down to Australia once a quarter on average. You know, with the um, advent, you know, unfortunately, the pandemic, we've always had great video conferencing facilities within the facility. My role requires me to travel extensively. So I, I do try to get in minimally once a quarter, but the video conferencing type facilities is consistent. Japan still has some COVID restrictions, so I don't travel there that often at this point in time. That's strictly video conference at this point in time. What's your favorite season in, uh, or time of the year in Australia? Uh, is actually our summer. I'm not a fan of the heat. You will see me transition outside of Nevada. The summer, my wife transitioned over uh, Memorial Day with the grandkids. So um, and she'll return about October also. I like that temperature of 40 degrees and below. I can put enough clothes on to stay warm. So. Well, good for you. Um, I don't have any questions and I had no concerns with your background. Um, it's very impressive and clean. Um, we're just happy to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Sutherland, welcome. Um, again, you're a familiar entity to uh, the regulatory folks here in, in Nevada. Um, thank you for your commitment to the industry and, and, and having such a successful record. I, I have absolutely no concerns or, or problems uh, approving your, your application today. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, I echo the, uh, the comments of my colleagues and appreciate that information. It's always fascinating to hear how someone that's, you know, involved in this business actually um, handles their operations. Um, I find that fascinating uh, simply because that's not part of my background. Um, you know, one of the, one of the challenges for the chair um, is that 
because of open meeting laws, we can't sit and, and kibitz in advance and say he's fabulous and we're going to have no questions <laughs> because I don't know um, what my colleagues will want to know or not know. But we really do appreciate you being here in person. It is a pleasure to meet you. And I have 100 percent support for this um, for your application. So thank, thank you. you. And at this time, I would ask my uh, colleagues if they have a motion. Madam Chair, I move for approval, approval of uh, non-restricted item number 14 is read into the record by Madam Secretary and is recommended by the Game Control Board. Is there any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. The record should reflect Commissioner Brown uh, recused on this matter, did not participate in the uh, vote. Thank you very much for your appearance here today. Thank you so much. And safe travels. <laughs> Okay. Going back to <laughs> reading in non-restricted number one. Non-restricted number one is the application of agricultural district number 13 for awarding of race dates for August 18th through August 20th, 2023. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Um, I appreciate you being here this morning um, and your appearance. Um, I think for Commissioner Krolicki, this is, uh, I think, probably his first race agenda item. <laughs> um, I was fascinated the first time um, that I heard about the um, exciting events. And so if you want to just go ahead and give us, you know, a highlights, we would appreciate it. Certainly, for the, record. Uh, for the record, my name is uh, Russell Neal, last name spelling N-I-E-L, Deputy Chief of the Gaming Control Board Enforcement Division in Reno. I oversee the Reno, Carson, and uh, Elko Enforcement Offices. Um, I have with me uh, Agent Andrew Olson, who did the investigations and prepared the reports that you have before you. Um, he's taken over for uh, super retiring Supervisor Brian McIntosh. He was our, our main man out there for a lot of years. Um, Andrew's done a great job in preparing for these uh, horse races, so um, he can summarize, give you a brief summary of what's going on out in Ely. Um, agenda, agenda item number two it covers the same thing, but only in Elko. Um, so any questions you may have, would you like him to give you a summary or do you have specific questions you want to get into? Well, I think um, we all had an opportunity to observe the board meeting and um, I will just go ahead and open it up for uh, questions specifically on non-restricted one. Um, questions or comments. I mean, I, from what I understand and what I uh, have reviewed in the materials and heard at the meeting, um, you know, both for non-restricted one and two, uh, things were better this year than last, you know, this last year than the year before. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Andrew can address that. Uh, good morning, everyone. Agent Andrew Olson, uh, Elko office up in uh, up in Elko, Northern Nevada. Uh, I did do the the investigation. Uh, not a whole lot of changes year over year. We did have a small increase in handle of uh, approximately ten thousand dollars up in Ely. Uh, the races ran very clean last year. Uh, as far as any changes for this coming race season, they're going to put in a couple new cameras that will help us uh, run the races that will oversee the uh, race paddock and the betting windows. And uh, we're fortunate to have our state steward, Doug Ray, returning again this year. He's been working for us for about 25 years, so he has a dearth of experience. And uh, we're also fortunate to have our uh, state veterinarian, Dr. Wyatt Winchell, returning to us as well. Um, so we're looking forward to a great race season. Okay, thank you. Do, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? In terms of uh, timing, when do you anticipate that the two video cameras will be installed? They'll be installed prior to the races. Okay. I just wanted to confirm, and, and I know um, based on my review of the record and watching the board's proceedings that last year there were no violations, no issues, no drug violations, with the exception of weather, which we can't control, but it was cleaned up pretty quickly and it was still successful. That's correct, ma'am. I have no areas of concern. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. 
And I just wanted to uh, congratulate um, Agent Olson and, and, and you, Deputy Chief Neal. I mean, it's a testament to hard work that uh, this is an easy uh, application in front of us today. Um, you know, you, you've all done extraordinary things to, to, to make sure that there are no issues. Uh, and, and for the record, while this is my first application as a gaming commissioner for the racing is certainly not my first time uh, watching both Ely and Elko racing over, you know, over the course of the year. It's always one of my favorite things to do as a lover of rural Nevada. I'm jealous that you're living in Elko, <laughs> except for the Mormon crickets, which I ran over. Uh, I was actually driving through Elko <laughs> County and, and up through Jackpot, uh, but the, the crickets were just extraordinary and all over downtown Elko. I, I know you've all been reading about it, but then they're hard to wash off the car, but yeah. it's just, <laughs> uh, you know, be, be careful when you go outside and, and I hope you have your, your leaf blower or something to, to scatter them. Thank you. That's all. Um, all right. Well, <clears throat> I was, I was, I was going to ask you what's the, how's the cricket situation, uh, but apparently it's continuing. <laughs> I have some it's, on my car starting. if you want a souvenir. It's starting. It's what? Oh, it's start. starting okay, to good. clear up. Um, all right. Well, I appreciate you being here and answering the questions um, as to uh, non-restricted number one. Uh, does someone have a motion? Chair, I'm happy to move for approval of non-restricted item number one as recommended by the Gaming Control Board and as read into the record by Madam Secretary. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you. Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number two? Non-restricted number two is the application of the Elko County Fair Board for awarding of race dates for August 25th through September 4th, 2023. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval. Okay, same situation for non-restricted number two. I believe we all had the opportunity to observe the board meeting where uh, you made obviously a very thorough report uh, about the circumstances of um, last year. And, um, and so, um, and it was, I believe, same situation was that it was more uh, successful this past year than the year before um, and great turnout. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up for any questions or comments. Thank you again for being here for this item. I, I did have a question. I noted that there were a number of investigations last uh, for the last event and there were six disciplinary matters and fines. And I noted that um, with the exception of the ineligible horse matter, setting that aside, the licensed horse trainer Juan Hernandez was the subject of five of the disciplinary matters. Can you tell me whether or not Mr. Hernandez is permitted to enter a horse into the 2023 races or if he's prohibited? Uh, yes, ma'am. So Mr. Hernandez is allowed to race here this year. He completed, uh, he paid all his fines and he did show up for his disciplinary hearing that was on the grounds um, for his failure to appear at the paddock at the appropriate time. So, yep, yeah, he'll be, he'll be, uh, I'm not sure if he'll show up this year, but he'll be eligible to race. Okay. Thank you for verifying that. Yes, ma'am. Just, I was, oh, I'm sorry. No, I have no other questions. Just in, in follow up to that, if you had any concerns in that regard about, his continued participation might be a different scenario. Um, if he shows up again this year with as many violations as he's had and he has a um, dirty test, we may have to step up the disciplinary measures. But as far as uh, this year, we'll, we'll, you know, move forward and see how things go. But he's, um, but there's definitely a qu close watch there. I would, I would assume. Uh, as much as we can, ma'am. Um, we can't test every single horse if he has a winner or if he happens to be a random test, then uh, then we'll catch him if he has anything. But uh, the the tests are getting expensive, unfortunately. So uh, we, um, you know, we're working within our constraints. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any additional questions or comments? <laughs> Okay, uh, well, we appreciate, again, you being here to answer questions. And at this time, uh, I think it's in proper form for a motion if, if one of my colleagues wishes to make it. I move for approval of non-restricted item number two is read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the Game Control Board. Any discussion on the motion? 
There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Good you. Racing. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Madam Secretary, if you could please read in non-restricted number three. Non-restricted number three are the applications of Thomas Graff, Rizard Presh, and Bridget Wimmer for finding of suitability as a member and or managing director as noted on the agenda. Recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good Madam morning. Chair. Commission, good morning, Madam Secretary. For the records, um, my name is uh, Sabine Snobel. I'm um, Head of Regulatory Affairs for the Novomatic Group. With me today is uh, the members of Novo Invest, uh, Bridget uh, Wimmer, Thomas Graf, and Richard Fresh. Good morning. Thank you very much for being here uh, again uh, this month. Uh, we appreciate your uh, personal appearances. Um, it, it always means something to us to, you know, as part of your commitment to our state and, and our processes uh, to have you here. Um, and we really appreciate it. Um, speaking for myself, I feel that the board meeting had a very thorough um, discussion uh, related to all of the matters um, in this item. And I don't have any additional questions or concerns, and I intend to support uh, their recommendation, but I'm going to open it up to my colleagues. Starting um, with Commissioner Brown, if she has anything, or Commissioner Solzarini, you can go yeah. first. <laughs> Mine are probably shorter, so I'll start. Um, I actually didn't have any questions. I appreciated the update um, from your council as far as the status of the current investigations. Um, we've, um, you know, obviously I was uh, sitting on the commission when we did the two-year limited um, based to concerns, but your track record uh, has looked good. Uh, so I'm happy to support it. Um, I didn't have any other questions that weren't answered uh, from the board presentation. Thank you. Good to see you again. Thank you for coming back. Um, I know we heard an extensive presentation in 2021 and we all had the opportunity to review the board's um, presentation as well two weeks ago. So that was very helpful. Um, and I understand that when you came before us in 2021, there were three key issues and one of them has been completely resolved. And I think that's the gambling tax investigation. Right. Yes. Um, and, and it's also my understanding that the real question about the generous gift giving has to do with whether it's friendships and close relationships or if it's derived from the employment relationship. Right. And I think there's a distinction, as I understand it, regardless of what the ruling will become ultimately if there is some final decision, is it's one thing to have met somebody at work, but if the gift is not related or motivated out of employment. I think it's a very fine line. So I'm very interested in the outcome. I do appreciate that the reporting has been thorough and timely every month. And I just wanted to say for the record, it's so nice to see a company like this where you have people who've been with the company for 10 years or 20 years, and it says a lot. So it's nice to have you in front of us. Um, we hope that the ultimate investigations from the prosecutor of the public corruption allegations um, will be positive, but whatever it is, you will give us the disclosure quickly. And of course, the donation tax issue when you have some sort of a resolution, you'll continue to report as you have. So yes. I, I know that the investigators had no issues or concerns regarding the individuals. We are fully notified of what's happening. So thank you for doing that. And, and thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Krulicki. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. Two German speakers here. Ah, okay. <laughs> and, I, and I attended the University of Vienna. Oh, great. Uh, so I know there's uh, a <laughs> lot of that, but I was I had to look up where the Grumpolskirchen Österreich is. Zwischen Wien und Graz. Ich glaube, yeah. Good. Um, no, it, the Just last for the meeting, record, you'll tell the court reporter how to spell all that. <laughs> I, I shall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I appreciate the conversations you had with the gaming control board, um, you know, uh, obviously it's a, a very complex and a lengthy investigation, but uh, your patience in the process and with the regulatory folks here in Nevada, you know, is greatly appreciated and necessary. Uh, but I echo the comments that you all, you know, if, uh, the, the loyalty, uh, um, you know, Mr. Groff, um, it's good to be Mr. Groff's friend. Um, but his generosity and, and devotion to the industry, uh, again, it's it's all impressive. But the record uh, created by the Game Control Board and, and, and that we've all reviewed, uh, I'm very comfortable 
moving forward and appreciate you all being here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, it would appear then with all of the materials we have and the meeting uh, information we've received, it would be um, appropriate for a motion. If either of my colleagues. Anything? Sure, Chair Tagliati. I move for approval of non-restricted item number three. As recommended, oh, I'm sorry. My numbers are all wonky today. As recommended by the Gaming Control Board and as read into the record by Madam Secretary. All right, is there any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you again for being here today. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, good luck. Thank you. 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 Thank I feel left out. Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number four? Non-restricted number four is the application of Novo Invest GMBH for a transfer of interest as noted on the agenda. It is also the application of JFG Privat Stiftung for registration as a holding company and for finding of suitability of Johann Frederick Graf as a controlling person and beneficiary. Lastly, you have the application of JFG Privat Stiftung as a member as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval. If you wouldn't mind stating your name again for the record. For the records, my name is Sabine Stoppel. I'm a head of regulatory affairs for the Novomatic Group. And thank you for having approved um, the waiver of appearance for Johan Graf, the transfer. Okay, um, so again, um, we've all had the opportunity to observe the board meeting and, um, you know, we have um, the investigation materials we've all had an opportunity to go through. I would open it up to my colleagues for any questions, comments. Can you just, uh, for the record, clarify the purpose of transferring the 75.1% interest into the Privatstiftung. Is that a tax benefit or it's, what's the it's, purpose? It's for estate planning. Okay. Uh, specifically for uh, Mr. Graf intends to uh, contribute its 75.1% to the to the Privatstiftung. So okay. it's the purpose to protect this large shareholding. Okay. Yeah. So just succession estate planning for Absolutely. the future for easy yeah. administration yeah. Yes. in the future. Yes. Okay. It seemed straightforward to me. I didn't have any other questions. Thank you. I, I almost feel bad that I've ignored your counsel. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Hoek. Oh. oh, we can't hear you. You are on mute. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Good morning. Good morning from Austria to all the members of the Nevada Gaming Commission. Good morning, Madam Chairman. Well, I don't know if 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 you have the same uh, feelings as a lawyer uh, here in Nevada would be if they sat through a proceeding and didn't have to ever say anything but best hearing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very happy to hear that the outcome is so positive. So in that case, I don't need to contribute anything. That's fine. Well, I, I will say that, um, you know, while we we have great investigation materials when we come into these meetings and we have board members who vet uh, these issues for us, I will say watching your presentation at the at the board meeting was very helpful to me and kind of um, making it, um, you know, for someone in not familiar with uh, the legal processes and, and how everything uh, works and what the tax ramifications and requirements are um, easily digested, if you will. Uh, so I really appreciated it and it's what um, helped this along, I think. Um, so anyway, thank you for being here just in case. Um, okay, so if anybody has any questions or comments, if not, um, motion. Just a comment and, and uh for the record, as already has been stated, but from my perspective, um, you know, some of the issues that are being discussed, tax and those things are, are incredibly serious. So when I first saw these items, 
uh, it certainly got my attention uh, as I was reading through the documents. But again, the the the, the board, um, sir, uh, Mr. Reig, uh, you did a a big job uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you answered my questions that I'd have today, you know, very well at that time. So uh, uh, again, I, I think this is a a, a swift conversation. This morning, um, there's been just a whole lot of effort and study and review that have gone into you know, the ease of what you know is likely to, to happen today. Um, and I, I, I too want to uh, applaud the, the special agent Ar Ar Barthelme, if that's a correct pronunciation, and uh, the other uh, supervisors on this transaction. I, I have n no concerns and, and I'm comfortable. So do we have a motion? Yeah, Madam Chair, I'd like to, to move for approval of non-restricted item number four as read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended for approval by the Gaming Control Board. Thank you. Is there any discussion on uh, Commissioner Kolicki's motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you again Thank you for much. all of your um, appearances and answering all of our questions and your reporting over the last two years. Um, it's made this a much easier decision for us today. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Madam Secretary, could you please read in non restricted number five? Non-restricted number five are the applications of MGM Resorts International and Mandalay Resort Group LLC for an amendment to their order of registration. It is also the application of Mandalay Bay LLC doing business as Bet MGM, doing business at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas race book and sports pool for licensure to operate a satellite race book and sports pool and to conduct off-track paramutual race and sports wagering. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have a disclosure on this item. The disclosure I made for the prior MGM matter, I would like to incorporate by reference if that's appropriate. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, good morning. Uh, good morning, Chair Tagliati, Commissioners, Executive Secretary Rupert. For the record, Sean McGinnis with Butler Snow on behalf of MGM Resorts International. With me at the podium, it's Pat Madamba, Senior Vice President, Legal Counsel for MGM Resorts International. I thought what might be helpful is, as Obviously, you guys have looked at the uh, watched the board hearing. We had a very lengthy, detailed timeline. I think maybe just giving a a high level description at this point would probably be helpful because we already have it in the record. The the yes. specific timeline just to give you background on this. Just for two housekeeping items. Yep. One is there's only one condition, and that's the surveillance. Correct. Correct. Okay. And two, the draft uh, order we're talking, the 58th uh, revised order of registration, um, draft one that the board referred to and that I assume you still have no problems with. Dated yeah, that's fine. Yes. That's 523.23. Okay. Exactly. Can I ask a question like, sure. relating to the conditions? Thank you. Yeah. Um, in our materials, it indicated that um, the audit division was requesting conditions on a couple of items. Have those been resolved? Yeah, th those are resolved at the board level. That's why they weren't okay. added in. Um, yeah, I, I knew that during the board, it was clear that they you'd submitted the attestation letter, yes. but then there was the waivers on 5225 and 22040, I believe. Correct, so, yes. Okay, so everything, the conditions that audit was concerned about have been fully Yes, all the audit conditions were satisfied, and that's... Okay. They weren't part I, of the board. Yeah, I wasn't very clear on that after reviewing the record. So thank you for clarifying okay. it. Okay, so the I'll, high level I'll, I'll give you a high level mm. here. Is it is as you, as you may recall, uh, about 13 months ago, uh, MGM acquired the membership interests of the the entity that operates the Cosmopolitan, and and under that agreement, when they purchased it. There was a stub period for the satellite race and sports book that William Hill had previously operated at the Cosmopolitan. MGM was aware that the Cosmopolitan systems didn't communicate and speak with the MGM systems, but only after MGM took control of the property and started looking at it in late May were they aware of the significant nature, as much more significant the, the issues that they're facing. 
there was a stub period where, where the sports book needed to be cut over to an MGM sports book by August of last year. There wasn't time to make it onto an agenda to become a satellite location. So we worked with GCB staff and the chiefs for an outstation approval, understanding that because of these communication issues between the Cosmopolitan and the MGM system, that there would need to be an interim period of time whereby some state ports that would go to the gaming control board for taxation and other items would have to be done manually by MGM for an interim period period of time. Fast forward, and so that successfully happened. It became an outstation in August of, of last year. Earlier this year, the enforcement division reached out to sort of, we, it had been anticipated that the interim period would, would be concluded by the end of April of this year and that then things would be communicative with the systems. Reached out because there was there's a book wagering report that's an automated report that enforcement typically gets that it has been unable to get because of an entry system was, was checking in with MGM to say, what's the status of this interim period? Will things speak with one another by the end of April of 2023? And, and MGM looked and did a review and realized that this is still a, a much larger task and, and it was better to just acknowledge that this is no longer an interim period, that it looks like it's not gonna be resolved until the first quarter of next year. It would be better to just go ahead, apply, get on an agenda and make this a satellite location so that the automated reports for the board could, could come in in a manner consistent with how they're reporting with other um, you know, regulatory requirements. That's basically the, the high level summary. I appreciate it. Um... So what I will do is I will open it up to any comments or questions of my colleagues, um, whoever has any. There was just a couple of things I wanted to um, make sure we um, had on the record, Mr. McGinnis. Mm -hmm. uh, when these two systems weren't communicating, you were doing the computations manually for pur purposes of your tax reporting and such. So there was no error in any of that reporting is that correct? no no errors it's just okay. it's just a it's just the manpower to be able to to go to through and add instead the of the tools. automated okay and that's what i expected i just yeah. want to make sure that it's clear that there was no tax effect right. or no uh issues with uh respect to any of that and did this have any re any effect on player reward I, I i do not believe so no it does not have like player rewards there is a player reward component about mgm rewards resets in the in the early first quarter of each year so this this will correspond when we anticipate this will come forward and be able to get through the satellite license to become an outstation again it should be able the system should speak with one another at that same time when the rewards are reset and therefore the cosmopolitan customers should then be brought into the mgm customers but currently no because the cosmopolitan still has its own rewards program okay so right patrons are being rewarded under that program Perfect. Those are the only two points I wanted to just obtain clarification on the record for. So thank you for providing that. Um, I don't have any other questions. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, you know, so it's, it's a lot of work. And if you can cut down the manpower to accomplish this, it, it makes perfect business sense. Anyone else have any questions or comments? They're it's, being it's oh, my, sorry, just quickly. It's my understanding that the Cosmo will be rebranded as Bet MGM. Is that correct? That's just the branding of the sports book. The Cosmopolitan won't be rebranded. The okay. Cosmopolitan will remain the Cosmopolitan in okay. Las Vegas. It's just that all the MGM sports books are branded at MGM as a brand. And, and when is that branding going to be completed? It's still it's branded that way at present. Okay. As a bad MGM book. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I don't I don't have any questions at all, no areas of concern. And can you just maybe give us a brief report while you're here about how business is going at the Cosmo? Exceedingly well. <laughs> Happy to hear it. I was there recently, um, and I can um, say with um, complete confidence, I agree. The, the, the <laughs> it was has, packed. Property hasn't missed a beat since we've taken it over. Packed. Don't report property by property um, publicly, but I'll simply say that the, the property continues to do very well. Excellent. Thank you for the update. I had to know it wasn't just that one one evening. <laughs> uh, anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, then it would appear this matters. Uh, this item is uh, ripe for a motion. Uh, Madam uh, Chair, I move for approval of non-restricted item number five as read into the record um, by Madam Secretary, subject to the surveillance condition that was recommended by the Gaming Control Board. Okay, any discussion on the motion? 
There being none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you very Thank much you very for much. being here. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number six? Non-restricted number six is the application of Parkway Reno LLC doing business as Parkway Tavern for a non-restricted gaming license and for licensure as a manufacturer and distributor. It is also the applications of Parkway Management LLC and Jonathan Fine for licensure as a member or manager as noted on the agenda. You also have the application of Parkway Management LLC for a transfer of interest as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. Good morning. Good morning, Dennis Gowald with the law firm of McDonald Carano. Uh, with me is Jonathan Fine, and in the audience is Robert Stockton. We had Robert show up even though he was registered uh, as a minority interest by the Gaming Control Board. Just to introduce you to all to him. And um, with your permission, uh, we'll have Jonathan give a affirmative presentation and open it up for questions. Please. Hi, I've just I've uh, I've just prepared a, about a two minute intro. Um, I want to thank uh, the agents that worked on our on our application, uh, senior agent uh, Widmar, um, Eric uh, Bartholme, and uh, agent Bridges um, for their diligence. I want to thank them and uh, sometimes the direction that they that they gave to us. Um, so I stand before you today with great excitement and anticipation as I present my case for the approval of my first non-restricted gaming license. It's an honor to be in the presence of this esteemed commission entrusted with the responsibility of regulating the vibrant and dynamic gaming industry of our great state. I come before you as an individual who possesses a deep passion for the world of gaming and an unwavering commitment to excellence. Throughout my life, I've witnessed the transformative power of this industry, bringing joy, entertainment, and economic prosperity to the community. Today, I seek to contribute to this legacy and embark on my own journey as a responsible and innovative gaming operator. I stand firm in my belief that the gaming industry is not just about games of chance. It is about fostering unforgettable experiences, creating cherished uh, memories, is about creating a safe and wel welcoming environment where individuals can come together engage in a thrilling entertainment and build lasting connections. It's about promoting responsible gaming practices and prioritize the well-being of our patrons. I've dedicated countless hours to studying the intricacies of the gaming industry, learning from its past and present and envisioning its future. I've surrounded myself with a team of talented professionals who share my vision and possess the expertise necessary to ensure the success of my venture. Together, we have meticulously developed a comprehensive business plan that combines innovation, integrity, and an unwavering commitment to regu regulatory compliance. If granted the privilege of a non-restricted gaming license, I pledge to uphold the highest standards of professionalism, transparency, and ethical conduct. Uh, I will prioritize the well-being and safety of our patrons, implementing stringent security me measures, and fostering an environment that promotes responsible gaming practices. I'm also committed to promoting diversity and, and inclusivity within the gaming industry, recognizing the importance of creating opportunities for individuals from all backgrounds and walks of life. I will actively seek to attract and retain a diverse workforce, embracing the unique perspectives and talents that individuals from different cultures, genders, and ethnicities bring to the table. I'll foster an inclusive, and supportive work environment where everyone has equal opportunities for growth and advancement. By, by prioritizing diversity, I aim to create a gaming establishment that reflects the rich tapestry of our society and celebrates the unique contributions of each individual. Moreover, I recognize the economic impact that the gaming industry has on our state. I'm committed to creating jobs, job opportunities and supporting the local economy. I will actively seek partnerships with diverse suppliers, contractors, and service providers, ensuring that our business contributes to the growth and the prosperity of a broad spectrum of individuals and the community. In, conclu in conclusion, I humbly request your approval for my non-restricted gaming license. I'm eager to embrace the challenges and responsibilities that have come with this privilege, and I'm confident in my ability to contribute to the growth and success of the Nevada gaming industry. Together, let us continue to elevate the standards of excellence, innovation, diversity, and the entertainment that our state is known for. Thank you for your time and your consideration. 
Thank you very much. Um, we appreciate your presentation. Um, before I open it up for any questions or comments of my colleagues, I'll first say um, that I was impressed by your presentation as well before the board. Um, and and I, I'm sure um, my colleagues would agree. I always find it very helpful um, to have, I mean, giving us information about your project executive team and all of their backgrounds in, in specific detail really gives um, a lot of, um, you know, perspective to us about what you've put into this and the kind of people that you've um, put your trust in to work with you um, for the success of your venture. And it's impressive. Um, I'll be supporting your application today, obviously. Uh, but if there are questions or comments of my colleagues, I'm going to open it up to them. Mr. Fine, welcome. It's a, it's a pleasure to see you, to meet you. Certainly your, your family has been well established uh, in the state for a long time. And uh, it's again, a pleasure. And I, I, I too uh, uh, anticipate very happily supporting your application. Thank you, as Madam Chair stated for the, the brochure that does always help. You know, I, I'm the one commissioner not from Clark County, live up North. This piece of property has had so much history and such a strategic location and import. And you know, even though Reno's not small, it's been you know the center of much of the rhythm of life and politics and you know the club and and you know the state. I mean, there's so much tradition there. Um, I was present for some of the conversations about converting it into UNR dormitory space, all of that. But I think you know what you all have envisioned is just a, a huge plus for that area, uh, part of downtown. Um, the 144 jobs I believe you're creating, um, the venues, the excitement, the buzz. Um, I, I think it's 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 again going to be a great success, and just a welcome addition to that part of down, downtown Reno. So good on you. Um, it was more casual comments. I've got two. One is I, I echo uh, Judge Assad's comments from his, the meeting last week. And you know, Mr. October didn't have to show up, but it would have been very nice to have uh, Mr. Jackson uh, show up. And I was thoroughly amused when I think it was you stating that he was actually outside trying to get people in the door. You know, how much, how fire. much fun is that? If, if Reggie Jackson asked me to do something, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. So, you know, that's good. And I, I know he's not needing to be here today, but Mr. Stockham, um, it, it's good to see you. I, I just you no, know, you're you you have family relations that are important. Tom Wiesner was one of the most special people in my world uh, a long time ago when he was the committee man, and you know he had hands that could just crush. I always had to ice my hands after you know, <laughs> I, I shook them, but his contribution to the state, you know, the big dog. Um, he never stopped talking about the Rose Bowl in Wisconsin, and you know, and he knew I have some family who are from Wisconsin and Wausau in, in particular. Yeah. But uh, I, I just want to recognize the, the history and the legacy that's carrying forward here. And it made me smile when I when I, I saw Tom Wiesner's name. Thanks for bringing his name up. I appreciate it. He was a, thank you so much. But I, I'm, I'm delighted to support this, this application today. Thank you. Commissioner solis Rainey. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Fine. I, echo the appreciation for the materials uh, that you put together. I think the, the video was fabulous, but just having all the materials at hand, giving us a visual uh, of the project um, makes it a lot easier for me. I'm excited to see such a project in Reno. I think it's been a long time coming and um, I can't wait to see what you do with it. I didn't have any questions uh, specifically with respect to your application. You know, you're known to us and you've done a good job with your other projects. Um, so thank you for thank you. just the thoughtfulness that you put into your presentation, both uh, written and what you presented today. I appreciate thank it. You. Commissioner Brown. Thank you so much for being here today, everybody. I, I enjoyed watching the video. I thought it was excellent. I think Reno really needs something like this and the over 5 million that you're putting into this project, I think will, it will show, it will be reflective. Um, I do have to say, I appreciated the presentation you made today. You said the word diversity a number of times. And I think the mindfulness 
and making that a priority is so important. So uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you for doing that. And I think you have impeccable judgment because you married Katie <laughs> and she's amazing. So tell her, I said, I haven't seen her in years. She's but She's having a baby in eight days. Well, oh. she's, a wonderful, we, we are she's a wonderful, lovely person and correction noted, we. Um, I did have a quick question. So it's my understanding there's not going to be any live entertainment. Uh, there will be no admissions on live entertainment. We will have uh, bands playing. We'll have um, out on the plaza, which is not in the casino. Um, we'll have free shows um, probably four to five times a week. Um, and, you know, this is phase one. Phase two, we want to open up two new restaurants, um, creating more jobs. And the diversity wasn't just in this presentation. It was going back in the history of, of my company. Um, I think that you sit on the board of Shade Tree. Um, I, I just donate to Shade Tree. I don't sit on the board. Okay. So we, um, we do uh, all the Thanksgivings for them, donating the food, sending our employees down. Um, I visit and do um, job interviews with people, mock interviews. We've actually hired um, eight or nine uh, women that were involved uh, somehow um, staying at shade tree so we've actually we've we've brought a lot of that down that when when i we had the bar at planet hollywood restaurant at planet hollywood so we've we've this is tw you know 12 years in our past we've, we've been working towards that goal and at um unlv i'm a trustee and i sit on the committee for trustees and one of my tasks um was creating uh an environment a, a group of trustees that looked more like the student body um unlv is the most diverse college in, in the country and uh we're, we're working to get the the board of trustees looking and uh and 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 acting as as uh the student body well i i thank you for that work i know you've served since 2019 as a trustee on the foundation and it is important to have people like you who have an appreciation and a history of diversity and just understanding the future of and shaping the state of Nevada. So I know you're busy. You've got three other tavern locations that are under construction and uh, to make that a priority is impressive. And I thank you for that. And I have absolutely no areas of concern and I'm, I'm very happy to have you present for us today. And I approve, I, I, I will support your application. Thank you. So um, at this time then it appears this matter uh, is right for our motion. I move for approval of non-restricted item number six is read into the record by Madam Secretary and is recommended by the Gaming Control Board. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you and congratulations for two uh, soon to be arrivals. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Personal <so> and professional. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number seven? Non-restricted number seven is the application of Border Inn Casino, Inc., doing business as Border Inn Casino for a non-restricted gaming license and for licensure as a manufacturer and distributor. You also have the application of Kang Quat for licensure as an officer, director, shareholder, and key employee. The recommendation <coughs> of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have a recusal on this item. Yes, thank you. My partner, Glenn Light, is appearing in front of us today, and he's my partner at Luz Roca, so I have to recuse, and good luck. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Togliati, members of the Commission, Madam Secretary. For the record, my name is Glenn Light with the law firm Lewis Roca, and I'm accompanied at the podium by Kang Kwok, who is the applicant. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Kwok would like to make a brief uh, five-minute statement that kind of explains how he came here um, and uh, his plans for the border in. We'd then be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Tagliari, members of the Commission, and Madam Secretary. For the record, my name is Ken Kwok. Briefly, by the way of background, I have an MBA from UC Berkeley. I have over two decades of experience in investment banking. I recently started to invest in the hospitality industry as a means to diversify my income stream. Over the past four years, I've purchased a motel in Colorado, a hotel in Prescott in Maine, and most recently, the Border Inn Casino, which has 29 
motel rooms, uh, 28 RV park spots, a small casino with 32 slot machines, a gas station, and some incidental facilities. The Border Inn Casino is located in Baker, Nevada, which has a population of approximately 120 people. The Border Inn Casino employs 23 of them. I started my due diligence for the Border Inn Casino in early 2022 and determined that it was a sound investment. Among other things, the property was profitable, the seller provided financing, and I identified multiple opportunities for growth. Based on my due diligence, I acquired the Border Inn Casino in June of 2022. I paid approximately $1.6 million, of which $600,000 was derived from personal savings and $1 million was derived from a promissory note with the seller. I also entered into a casino lease agreement with the seller pursuant to which the seller conducts the gaming operations at the property while I undergo licensing. The casino lease is due to expire at the end of this month. At the time of purchase, I moved to Baker and began to reside uh, on property. I knew the best way to learn the operations was for me to be there. In August 2022, I received permission from the chair of Nevada, uh, chair of the Nevada Gaming Control Board, to observe and study gaming operations including writing jackpot slips, conducting slot drop counts, performing minor slot errors, and general compliance. Accordingly, I have spent the last year living at the property to gain hands-on experience and uh, with both gaming and non-gaming operations. Uh, thus far, the, my investment thesis for the Border Inn Casino has proven to be correct. Since the acquisition, property has seen a 15% year-on-year increase in revenue. However, having resided at the Border Inn Casino for the last year, I realized that I am unable to operate the business remotely. Specifically, the Border Inn Casino has several complex operations, a gas station, a C-store, a motel, an RV park, gift shop, a restaurant, a bar, and a casino, which require me to remain on site to operate the business. Additionally, I've spoken to several slot route operators about overseeing the gaming operations. None are willing to travel to Baker, uh, Nevada. I've also come to the realization that I have been on the road for almost three years now, and I want to relocate back to the San Francisco Bay Area to be with family. Accordingly, I've decided to release the Border Inn Casino for sale. Importantly, I intend to continue to reside at and operate the Border Inn Casino until the property has been sold and a new buyer has been licensed by the Nevada Gaming Commission. I understand that this may take three to five years and ultimately it is what is best for the property, the employees and myself. Importantly, the gaming revenue is key to the profitability of the business. Receiving a gaming license today will help me continue to operate Border Inn Casino until the property is sold. Lastly, I would like to address my uh, prior purchase of the Prescott Inn in Prescott, Maine. Initially, the business performed very well. Uh, of note, I participated in the Emergency Rental Assistance Program to house the underprivileged. Between March 2022 and October 2022, up to 75 rooms were occupied through the governmental program. Unfortunately, this program ceased unexpectedly in October 2022, and numerous occupants refused to leave the property. These holdover occupants refused to pay their accommodation and began to vandalize the property. This was a crushing blow to the business. For one, the rooms are being occupied for free, and two, the property's reputation was destroyed. As a result, I had to close the property. Importantly, I'm, I worked closely with the Department of Labor in Maine to ensure that the business was closed in accordance with labor laws. The mortgagee auctioned the property in 2023, and I'm currently working with the mortgagee on a repayment plan. At this time, I anticipate uh, an amount owed will be approximately $1 million. 
I have three possible sources of funds to pay the deficiency. One, personal and family savings of up to $300,000. Two, operating profits from the Border Inn Casino and the motel in Colorado. Three, the proceeds from the sale of the Border Inn Casino and, if necessary, my Colorado motel. In short, I do not anticipate the auction for the Prescott Inn uh, to impact the operations for the border in casino. To conclude, I spent the last year living at the border in casino. I am intimately familiar with the gaming and non-gaming operations and the business is profitable. However, having reassessed my priorities in life, I've decided to sell the border in casino. I believe it is the best for the long-term success of the property, its employees and myself. The receipt of the gaming license today help me continue to operate business in a profitable manner until a new buyer is licensed. Thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your affirmative presentation and your comments. Um, I believe, you know, there was a very thorough discussion of, of this uh, item at the uh, board, but I do want to open it up for my colleagues and any questions they may have. Uh, or comments, um, and I'll start with uh, Commissioner Krolicki. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, and thank you for being here. Mr. Kwok, am I, am I saying that correctly? Right. And, and I appreciate uh, the information you provided. You know, I don't know if I have questions as much as just observation and, and, and comment. Um, you know, you, you come with an incredibly compelling story, your family, um, you know adversity <laughs> very well, and it's a testament to your character. Um, you know, Baker is one of those places in Nevada you don't go to very often. Um, I love Lehman Caves, and so I, I think I've uh, purchased things in that store once upon a time, and I appreciate you being there. Um, but I, I understand your reasons um, to, to have to move forward, but again, your loyalty to the property, to the town, you know, you know, we've said it several times, but you employ 20% of the folks in, in Baker and, you know, the, you know, there are options to shut down and those kind of things, but your desire to do what's right for the town uh, at some personal sacrifice, again, is a, is a testament to, to, to your character. Um, sorry about the things in Maine. I, you know, again, I, I just can't imagine you, know, you try to do these things and you have a big fat liability at the end of the day. And, and, um, you know, and you've got family members who've also invested in, in some of this, but I, uh, I am, you know, fully support what you're doing. The, the gaming control board uh, certainly had uh, an extensive conversation about what you're attempting to do and, and doing. It makes sense. And I, I fully you know, support uh, this application. Thank you. Commissioner Solis Rainey. Thank you, um, Mr. Kwong, for being here. Um, we appreciate, I appreciate um, the affirmative presentation that you made. And I also um, echo the comments just about the adversity that you faced and how you've come through it. I think it says a lot about your character um, that you're trying to do the right thing for this property where so many pe people in that small community rely on, on it. Um, I didn't have any questions with respect to the application, I mean, you answered them both with your presentation that you provided and, um, you know, today. So I'm happy to support the application. Um, you know, I, um, I agree with my colleagues. Um, you know, there are people who appear before us who are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week to make a success of their business and their commitment. Um, and you, you, bring it to a whole new level as far as, you know, 100% moving there, living there for as long as you have and committing to continue to live there, um, presumably to the sacrifice of everything is pretty remarkable. And so, um, and impressive. Um, I can't imagine that we couldn't support this application uh, um, for all the reasons that have already been eloquently stated by my colleagues. And so at this time, I would ask for a motion. 
Madam Chair, I move for approval of non-restricted item number seven as read into the record by uh, Madam Secretary and as recommended by the Game Control Board. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks. There's more licenses than I can imagine. All the things are on the counter. 121st resident. <laughs> That's remarkable. That's reliable. Oh, yeah. Okay, and for the record, Commissioner Brown did not participate in the vote on this matter. All right, how's our court, how's our court reporter doing? I'm Good? doing fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay, just checking. Um, Madam Secretary, could you please read in um, our next item, non-restricted number eight. Non-restricted number eight is the application of Vincent Russo for finding of suitability as a key employee at Golden Tavern Group, LLC. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Madam Secretary. Appreciate it. Phyllis Gillen for Golden Entertainment. With me is Vincent Russo. Vince is director of our tavern operations. He provided a uh, background at the Gaming Control Board. We have a quick update for you or just a quick re recap, and, and then we're open for any questions. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> morning. Morning. I want to thank the board, uh, Madam Secretary. Um, the commission and uh, Agent Young for his thorough investigation. Uh, my name is Vincent Michael Russo. I'm the director of tavern operations at PT's Taverns. I'm born in, I was born and raised here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I graduated from Arborview High School. I graduated from the police academy in 2016 at 22 years old. I come from a police family. My father served for 27 years uh, with Metro and retired as a sergeant. I have two uncles that are retired from Metro as well as a sergeant and a lieutenant. And my brother currently has 10 years of service with Metro and is assigned to the Major Violator Bureau. Uh, after serving the community for four years, I was presented with an opportunity to join Golden Entertainment. Uh, this was a tough decision for me to make, uh, but ultimately I, I talked with my wife who was eight months pregnant at the time. And uh, we decided that this was best for uh, my family. And uh, I was excited to embark on this, this new journey. Uh, and create a new legacy for my son. Um, I held many positions when I started with Golden. Um, I started in the warehouse uh, and ultimately worked my way into the position I hold today as the director of tavern operations. I managed seven regionals and 63 taverns. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate your appearance here. Um, I think you've probably heard me say it a couple times today, the nature of our system is for you to um, come before us um, regulators more than once and subject yourself to questions and comments. So we really appreciate you being here and your patience today. Um, and um, very thorough investigation. I have no uh, questions or concerns. Um, I you know, was a, a judge in the 8th Judicial District for 18 years. I know how hard your job was. Um, I applaud you for uh, what you did then and, and understand your decisions um, and good for gaming in Nevada. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm gonna open it up to my colleagues for any questions or comments, um, starting with Commissioner Brown. Thank you so much, Chair. I really enjoyed watching your presentation in front of the board. It resonated with me remarkably when you talked about your family legacy. And I know you make tough decisions in your life, but this sounds like an excellent opportunity for you. And you seem like a very hard worker. You're very committed and you're not afraid to roll up your sleeves and just get entrenched and learn and make yourself useful. Um, and so I'm, I'm very impressed. I mean, you've gotten involved in the financials and reporting and the analytical respects. And it's such a departure from your service uh, with the police department. And thank you, of course, for your service. And your family kind of has a legacy already with the, the service to the community with the, the police work because that's not easy work. So I'm, I'm just very impressed. And um, I think you're going to exceed all expectations and do very well. I have absolutely no areas of concern and um, I will support your application. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Solis Rainey. Thank you for being here, Mr. Russo. Um, I echo the comments made by my colleague. Um, I don't have any areas of concern with respect to the application. Um, if you could maybe just tell us a little bit more though, I was curious how you spend your time since you have so many uh, taverns that you're overseeing. 
yeah, I have a, I have a great regional team. Uh, they're very supportive. Um, and, you know, my job is to basically execute the plans that are set forth by our executives. Uh, and so we, we sit and we have many meetings with my regional team um, and we divvy out responsibilities. Um, and, you know, they were incredibly supportive of uh, my journey with Golden. A lot of them have been there a lot longer than um, even before Golden took over PT's Taverns. Uh, so for me to, to step in as young as I am, uh, you know, they, they were there day one supporting me and, and making sure that I had all the tools to succeed. And I, I rely heavily on them. And um, I, I, I believe that, uh, you know, we all have to work together to accomplish those goals. The 63 taverns is a lot, but we have 63 great managers out there uh, that control their buildings. How often do you get to the different locations? Um, you know, before I stepped into the director role uh, as a, a regional, I had nine taverns uh, and I would try to hit, uh, you know, at least one tavern or at least uh, all those taverns weekly. Um, now I, I bounce around and try to uh, go to the taverns that have ongoing projects. Uh, so I would say I hit about three or four a week. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, like I said, I don't have any concerns. Thank you for your service in the department. And um, I think this was a good call for your family. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's a growing family, I'm sure. So uh, it's a good time to get out of the, the law enforcement. Mr. Russo, thank, thank you so much for being in front of us. I hope you don't get tired of people appreciating your story and, and your and your service, but I'll pile on. Uh, I think you'll be a wonderful addition to the gaming industry in Nevada. Um, what a great start. What an important background, too. I mean, thank you for the service. Those skills, you know, it, it, I think uh, what you bring to um, Golden Tavern Group is is terribly important, you know, beyond the the obvious relationships. But good on you, good on them, and I wish you nothing but the best and support the application. Thank you. At this time, do does anyone have a motion? I just have one more question, out of curiosity, if sure. I may. Can you tell me is Barbell Apparel still in business? They are. Okay, well, I'm glad you sued them because um, I think you figured out what Class B membership was really about, but I'm sure you've turned you know, over to a new section of your life, and so you, you don't really care about that, but I'm glad you did that. I learned many lessons. And, you know, sometimes that's how you learn. It's not always easy, but they're good lessons and they serve you well. Thank you. And I'm prepared, Chair, to make a motion. Okay, thank you. Yes, I move for approval of non-restricted item number eight, as recommended by the Gaming Control Board, as read into the record by Madam Secretary. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor, say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. And at this time, Madam Secretary, if you could please read in non-restricted number 11. Non-restricted number 11 is the application of Golden Entertainment Inc. for an amendment to their order of registration. It is also the application of Sartini Gaming LLC doing business at Lovelock Junction Casino for a non-restricted non gaming license. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have a disclosure on this item. Thank you, I do. Uh, Golden Entertainment is a current client of Loose Rogue, the firm where I'm a partner, in which matters I'm not personally involved, in which matters do not relate to today's application. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item, and I do not believe the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record, and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Phyllis Gilland. On behalf of uh, the applicant for Lovelock Junction Casino, I have with me in uh, Carson City, Jennifer Madol, who is our Director of Route Operations, and Carrie Daniels, who's our Regional Chain Store Manager. Um, they will be supporting this project. Uh, I will give you a very quick overview of what we talked about the Gaming Control Board. This is a location in Lovelock Junction outside Reno, Fallon, Fernley, kind of in that area, about the location's about 5,000 square feet, give or take. Um, it had the employees that are there now will be retained. Um, the ones who uh, will we'll have some new employees as well, but the ones who won't be with us will be with the hotel there. So everybody in Lovelock Junction in this location will retain their positions. Um, we uh, will, in addition, have slot techs, slot hosts. Um, our route supervisors will be there weekly. Both Jennifer and Ms. Daniels will be there weekly. Um, so we, it will have uh, additional um, people 
involved in the operations once we uh, uh, take over. Um, we have a key employee, Dan Rosbeck, whose application is being filed timely, um, who will also be involved in the um, review and management of that location. We, for reference, we do have several other tavern locations in the area, so it's it's in our uh, travel zone, so it's it's got support. Um, already built in. Our timing hopefully is July 1st. Um, at this point, they'll do a final drop, a final accounting for the uh, prior um, gaming license. Um, and we are good with the surveillance requirements, the limited operation of slot machines um, and the key employee filing. Any other questions you might have, we're happy to answer. Okay, thank you for that. Um... The tenth revised order of registration, draft one, is the the order at issue, correct? Yes. And um, so let's just get that housekeeping out of the way. I will open it up to any comments or questions. Uh, Commissioner Krolicki, Solis Rini, Commissioner Brown. Good news. Very straightforward. <laughs> Very straightforward. And the date on that draft order number one is uh, May twenty third, twenty twenty three. Yes. And no no issues with it. No. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Um, so would you like to make a motion? I have to make a motion, Chair. Um, I move for approval of non-restricted item number 11 as recommended by the Gaming Control Board and is read into the record by Madam Secretary. And um, it includes the draft number one dated 5-23-2023. Okay, um, so with these matters, um, is there, and the motion, is there any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And it appears there are none opposed. Thank you. We'd thank like you. to thank Aubrey Wilson, the agent to manage this review as well. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number 12? Non-restricted number 12 is the application of Affinity Gaming LLC for a waiver of the provisions of Nevada Gaming Commission Regulation 4.080 as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I know I'm moving so fast, no one can keep up. <laughs> That's right. Like Good. the wind. <laughs> no doubt. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Madam Secretary. For the record, Connor Shea, Brownstein, Hyatt, Farber, Shrek, on behalf of Affinity Gaming Holdings. Accompanying me this morning uh, is Mr. Andre Scrivens, who should be entering momentarily, the Chief Executive Officer. Also present with me is Ms. Erin Barnett, Senior Vice President and General Counsel. <clears throat> are requesting a waiver of regulation 4.080. Uh, this past December, the commission approved a dividend payment from Affinity. A portion of that dividend has been made already. Affinity is requesting a six month extension to monetize and pay the rest of that dividend. Uh, for those reasons, we are requesting a waiver of 4.080. With that being said, I would invite any questions from the commission. Thank you. I appreciate your appearance on uh, your client's appearance today. Um, I will open it up to any questions or comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, just to confirm, uh, you did with, with the board, but you believe the six month extension is sufficient for your needs, correct? I do. That's the only question I had, Madam Chair. Yeah, that question was asked, and Ms. Vermey said um, she expected it by the end of the year or something to that effect. Um, so then I realized the year is half over. <laughs> um, that was the moment of uh, realized how fast time flies. Um, so, do you have any questions, Commissioner Solis Rainey? Commissioner Brown? Um, do you have, first of all, good to see you. Nice seeing you as well. Are you finished practicing in bankruptcy court? They kicked me out. Okay, because of your dad, <laughs> Jim Shea, tell him I that's, said hi. That's right. Okay, um, there's not enough room for both of you up there. There's not. There is, I'm kidding. Um, so the expiration date that 
you're seeking um, an additional extension under Reg 4080, subsection 4. That expires in December of 2023 that you're seeking. Correct. The current expiration would be the date of today's hearing. That's mm -hmm. why I am so desperately seeking an extension. And I just want to make sure that you don't have any concerns in any way, shape, or form that the transaction will be ready to close by that date. Let me pause to confirm with my client. You could step forward. Uh, identify yourself, please. Sure, Andre Scriven, C. Thank you. Welcome. Um, not that we've been told. I'm, I, it just wasn't clear to me. I know that the confidential amount was distributed on January 23rd, 2023. I'm not clear what the delay was in terms of not meeting today's deadline. If somebody could just clarify. Well, the delay in the transaction was the point that the transaction was still in negotiation and in process. And you know, as transactions do, they're not a, a linear path and ultimately got signed a little bit later than. Okay, so the terms have since been memorialized? Yes, they're, 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 they've been signed and it's in the Q4 uh, commission approval. Okay. And if I may amplify with some further details, the transaction for clarity of the record, the dividend is intended to be paid from the sale proceeds uh, upon monetization of one of the holdings, which is Rail City Casino. As my client representative noted, that is currently under commission approval for a, approval of that sale. Okay, thank you for clarifying. That just wasn't elucidated for me when I was watching the board presentation, but it is clear to me that it's from the cash on the balance sheet and nothing else. And so the, the same approval that we gave when we heard about this request the first time, I have no concerns at all. I just wanted some clarification for the record and all the other conditions are still in effect, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, if there's no additional questions or comments, it appears this is in proper form for a motion. Madam Chair, I'd like to move approval for non-restricted item number 12, uh, as recommended by the Gaming Control Board and as read into the record by Madam Secretary with a condition that was presented. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you very your much. Good to see you. Appearance today. I see you as well. All right. This brings us to the restricted items held out for discussion. Uh, Madam Secretary, I, uh, if you could please read in restricted number two. Restricted number two is the application of VIX Symphony Park LLC doing business as VIX for restricted gaming license. It is also the applications of SFM Inc. for licensure as member and manager and the applications of Paul Loudon and Paul Wayne Loudon IV for licensure as an officer, director, and key employee as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Judge. Madam long Chair. time no see. Yeah, a long time no see. How you been? No see. And membership, uh, Madam Executive uh, Secretary, board membership, Judge, it's good to see you this morning. Um, J.T. Moran, the law firm of Clark Hill, 1700 Pavilion, on behalf of the Loudon family who are all here on this particular item, which is really pretty unique. I, I have the privilege, of course, Judge, in appearing in front of you today, but I also have the pleasure and privilege of representing an institution, a family with a legacy as deep as the roots grow in this particular state, uh, Nevada. Uh, Mr. Loudon, I want to introduce uh, really the patriarch here. Um, Mr. Paul Loudon is here. Uh, he is our CEO of the, the publicly traded contingency, that's Archon. Uh, VIX is a, a one business opportunity of many. Uh, that we are pursuing and have pursued here. It's a wholly owned sub by the PTC. Um, but also I wanted to note for the record, we have uh, the brains of the operation, Ms. Sue Loudon here, also appearing on my right here. Uh, and of course we have um, Mr. Paul Loudon IV uh, here, who is our newest licensee. Also noting for the record, um, Mr. Loudon Sr. Uh, this is his, I believe 12th or 13th license with the state of Nevada uh, as it relates to gaming and privileged licensing in the state. And also noteworthy is the fact that uh, Paul IV, this is his first license. So we notice and see a change of guard. I am not going to make much of an affirmative presentation today because Judge, you would know better than anyone. I feel I made a pretty robust record before the Gaming Control Board. Chair Hendricks allowed me to do that, of course, with his uh, colleagues, uh, Judge Assad and obviously Brittany Watkins, but um, I think it is probably apropos 
to let uh, the younger uh, Mr. Loudon make representations about his new venue because it is very exciting. Um, you do have obviously the items that are scheduled here. We have suitability determinations and registrations and whatnot and findings of suitability. Um, but aside from that, we, we want to tell you a little bit about the location. You got a chance to get a snapshot of that um, from the gaming control board's transcript. But I, I really feel, unless you saw the video, which you may have, um, Mr. Loudon the fourth does tell a very compelling story and he's offering something very, very unique in an area, uh, that is really starting to really, uh, um, blossom. This would be the best characterization in the downtown area, specifically the symphony park area and, uh, Mayor Goodman and uh, Cedric Creer and the rest of the members of the city council were kind enough to give us this opportunity uh, to do business in Symphony Park, which is really their diamond uh, down in that area. And so with that, I, I want to turn the mic over to um, Mr. Loudon IV um, to share a few thoughts as to the operation and uh, the, the ongoings of the operation. Thank you. Good Welcome. Morning. Thank you. Good morning, Commission. Uh, good morning, Madam Secretary. Uh, yes, we were uh, thrilled. Uh, to build a place like VIX um, and have the opportunity. Uh, we do have some other hospitality operations in town, but there really wasn't anything uh, quite like VIX. Um, we were looking for a place, uh, a location for a number of years, actually, um, around this community and just couldn't really find anything uh, that made sense to us when the city um, presented us with an opportunity to be in Symphony Park. Uh, we jumped at the opportunity immediately and knew exactly what we were going to do. Um, we built something very special. Uh, the community there has uh, welcomed us very warmly. The city is great. Uh, Councilman Career was a great champion for us um, in uh, getting all of the approvals um, from the city. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have uh, on the actual operation of the venue. Well, we appreciate you being here, like I've said before, to multiple people today. I know it's kind of tedious to come twice, and, and uh, but we really appreciate your appearance and your patience, and welcome. Um, thanks for coming today. Um, it's exciting to uh, have you here and have you talk about the project. Um, it's it, you know, I'm, I've had the opportunity to watch the board meeting, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it sounds fabulous, and I'm uh, very excited for you. And I'm going to open up to my colleagues to see if uh, we have questions and comments. I hope after today's proceedings, you go back and watch the YouTube video because your parents are beaming behind you. They are so proud, and it's very sweet. So you can watch it. Anybody, you can afford it to everyone. It's, it's, it's uh, wonderful to see the legacy family here together. Just really nice to have you here and make the presentation. Thank you. Commissioner Krolicki. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm going to climb on one, one more time on this pile on. Um, you know, Paul, I think I first met you. I don't think you were a teenager yet, and you were running around Carson City uh, chasing your mother. Um, but, you know, it, it this has been a legacy day. You know, we, we've mentioned uh, some big names in Nevada and Tom Wiesner, the Moran family, but the Loudon family is, is uh, just such a story and, and, and an integral part of, of the state uh, to carry on, you know, the tradition um, and to have had an opportunity to, you know, you were a lot shorter when I first met you. Um, but I, I think this is such an exciting opportunity, location, um, the the nexus with your family and and the and the, and the talents and, and the music, uh, I just can't imagine a, a a more ideal opportunity for all of you. But in addition to that part of of Las Vegas, so I fully support it. I applaud it, and it's awfully nice to see you. And and uh, the, the, the the tradition lives on. Congrats. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. I didn't have any questions or concerns with the application. Um, your parents look wonderful and they, they are beaming behind you. So um, <laughs> congratulations. Watch the video. <laughs> um, it sounds like a fabulous project. I'm excited. I love Myron's. And so I'm excited to check out this location. Um, but um, thank you for being here and best of luck with the project. I do have some questions. Okay, Commissioner Brown. Thank you. I just had a few questions. I watched the presentation. Um, 
uh, very excited that you're bringing culture, more culture to Las Vegas and the state of Nevada. Um, it is much needed and it will, I think it will enrich the community beautifully. Can, do you have any, you know, bands lined up that we might know of? I'm just very curious. Um, our focus uh, for the uh, venue is primarily jazz yes. related. There's a lot of sub, sub genres of jazz. Um, uh, we have a lot of local talent here in here in Las Vegas that uh, we've already started to uh, bring in. We have um, a nice partnership with the Las Vegas Academy's jazz um, high school uh, combo. Um, we've been playing them a lot regularly. Um, you wouldn't even know they're high school kids, actually. Um, uh, we do see ourselves uh, bringing in a little more seasoned um, uh, musicians, performers um, over time, and uh, hope to just have a nice uh, a nice event calendar built built around that. Could you tell me a little bit about your volunteer service on the Las Vegas City Arts Commission? I know you've been doing that since 2018 and you seem to have a unique perspective. How many people sit on the commission with you? What type of projects do you get involved in in, in terms of the Arts Commission? Yes, uh, that was an interesting experience. I, um, I'm no longer a member, um, but uh, I did serve a uh, term and um, uh, got to basically understand the inner workings of, of the city and, and uh, where, uh, where a lot of funds end up uh, getting allocated. Um, uh, it's been, uh, it was nice if for nothing more than just to um, have a little bit of information before most people uh, on uh, what was uh, going to be commissioned in advance. Thank you for doing that. Uh, and then I understand that you currently serve as a financial reporting manager and operations manager for Archon Corporation since 02. Yes, correct. And are you still working with that company or how are you dividing up your time between this new exciting venture? Yes, um, I will still continue that role. Um, it will just be absorbed into my regular uh, weekly schedule, I guess. And then in terms of... Um, I know his application has been withdrawn from Mr. DiMartino. Do you know if he has left the state and is seeking different um, employment somewhere else? I was just curious. Um, I haven't spoken to Mr. Uh, DiMartino in some time. Okay. I, to my knowledge, I think he's still here. Okay. Uh, I heard some, I, heard, I thought maybe council said that he, he was leaving the state. So I just wanted, I was just curious. Oh. Um, if someone knew. Oh yeah, yes. just to, just to affirm on that. Yes, um, so he had left some time ago because the the restaurant has been operating for some time without gaming, obviously with local liquor uh, licensing and then full food service. But yes, he decided to leave to pursue other avenues. I might have made a misrepresentation in the gaming control board's meeting where I had said that he had left the jurisdiction. Yeah, but I I, I didn't mean like leave the jurisdiction, the state, possibly leave. You know, understood. That's Las another Vegas. legacy family here. So I was sad to hear he left the state. So I just wanted to yes. get clarification on that. Opportunities. Yes. Excellent. We haven't spoken to him in some time, but everything was. It was amicable, amicable, as I understand, from the board presentation. Well, this is exciting. Congratulations. I'm very happy for you. I love Symphony Park. Um, I think it is a wonderful addition to the state of Nevada, and I wish you all the best. And I thank you and your family for coming today. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any additional comments or questions? I think um, we all unanimously agree this is very exciting. And um, and so I think at this time I would ask uh, who would like to make the motion. Motion. I move for approval of restricted item number two as read into the record by Madam Secretary and as recommended by the Game Control Board. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Congratulations good luck. and good luck. Thank you. Thank you all. Very Thank excited. you for being here. We're all going to check it out. So we'll see you again. Yes. <laughs> we'll be looking for you. <laughs> no comps. <laughs> and no gaming. <laughs> uh, Madam Secretary, could you please read in restricted number three? Restricted number three is the application of SNC LLC doing business as Jake's Bar for restricted gaming license and the application of Cindy Petrofo for licensure as member and manager. Recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for. Good morning, uh, Chair Tagliati and Commission members. Thank you for seeing me today. I promise to stay for the whole thing and not leave like I did with the, with the board. I apologize. I'm Cindy Petrofo. Um, just a brief history I was born and raised in Salt Lake City, Utah. 
Went to high school there, went to college in St. George. Moved here in 1987 to open up a diagnostic imaging center, which is still open up on Flamingo and Pearl. I then left that to work for Dr. Lonnie Hammergren, which we just lost last week. That's a tough one. Oh. I was his business and office manager for nearly 20 years. He's been a big part of my family for 30. Um, I was then hired as, well, when he retired, I didn't really want to go into an office anymore. So I thought I would bartend and have some fun. So here we are. <laughs> I was hired as um, manager for Jake's Bar in 2010. I've been in that capacity for 13 years. We lost the owner in 2020. So I decided to buy it. Hence, here we are again. Um, I think it's a, it's a good working bar. I know every aspect of it from the bartending to the kitchen, to the office, to inventory. I have an excellent rapport with all of our vendors. I don't see any issue with changing over. And I look forward to continuing it in the same manner that it's been run all these years. Well, thank you. And thank you for being here today and for your patience until we got to your yeah. item. Um, you know, one of the benefits of being the uh, chair is I get to uh, be a fly on the wall, if you will, and listen to the investigators present the investigations and materials uh, at the rump. Well, not at rump, not the rump, because I've been corrected many times. Rump, um, and you know it's it speaks to you that um, what you know from the notes that I took uh, from that meeting that the agent that handled your um, handled your investigation um, talked about how you handled it all yourself without counsel uh, or an advisor, and that you quote did amazing. Thank you, and I so, I appreciate Joe Lombardo. He was great. Good for you, because it's not easy. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so um, I appreciate you being here, and I would uh, I don't have any questions for you, but I am going to open it up for my uh, colleagues for any comments or questions they may have. I see Commissioner Krolicki. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Petroker, welcome. Um, you are a very good public speaker. <laughs> You're not comfortable doing it, but you've uh, quitted yourself well. And I, too, want to reemphasize Chair's comments. Um, um, Agent Lombardo went out you know, the way to, to make sure that you know, working with you was a great pleasure and um, a wonderful job. Um, you've mentioned uh, the passing of, of Dr. Hammergren. What you know? Again, we've we've spoken about a lot of people today, but what a character he was. Um, I remember watching him um, as as Lieutenant Governor presiding over the Senate. He made up his own words, but he did so in iambic pentameter. Uh, you know, who else could <laughs> do something like that? And it was intimidating to follow in his footsteps in, in the Senate. Uh, but what a special ride that must have been to hang out with with Lonnie and and uh, his eccentricities and stories just uh, you know good on you but I have full support great faith in, in what you're doing and, and fully support this application thank you. thank you for being here and just being part of a, a wonderful start thank you Commissioner Solis Rini Ms. Petrarco thank you for being here and welcome um, just one quick question. I, you commented during the board meeting that um, your husband also well, works with you. Does he have an ownership role? No. Or, no. Not, okay. Not yet. Does he have an official role with the property? He does maintenance. He gets a paycheck now. He's been doing maintenance as long as I've been there, but now he actually gets paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. He retired from the IBUW 38 years. So, what, two years ago? Yep. So now he just well, lucky him. golfs and he golfs. Yeah. And he helps fix broken stuff at the bar. Great. Um, no, I was just curious about that because I didn't see much about him in the application, but um, I think it's very commendable that he was helping fix everything without getting paid. He does more than that. So yeah. So, <laughs> well, thank you for being here. You did a great job with it. And um, yeah, I, I didn't have any concerns. I think you'll do a good, uh, great job with the property. Thank you. Commissioner Brown. Thank you. Um, just such a pleasure to meet you in person. I enjoyed watching your board presentation. You are very loyal, hardworking, committed, and dedicated. And it's so nice to see you become a business owner. I think all of your years of loyalty are paying off. And I'm very excited that now you have something to call your own and you're working for yourself. And, you know, 
when you work for other people, you learn different styles and you say, well, if I were the boss, I would do this. Well, now it's your turn. So I've learned from them. Exactly. You've, I think you've had great mentors. So um, you and your husband seem like very loyal people, 38 years. I mean, that's commendable. So I'm excited for you and I'm happy to support your application. Thank you. I echo the comments of all my, my colleagues. Um, and I think at this time, if one of them has a motion, we can make it official. Thank you, Chair. I move for approval of restricted item number three. Any discussion? As on recommended by the Gaming Control Board and is read into the record by Madam Secretary. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Congratulations and thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Good luck. Madam Secretary, could you please read in restricted number six? Restricted number six is the application of LIG Hospitality LLC to add, remove, or modify a condition. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have a disclosure on this item. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's me. Um, so I've previously made disclosures as it relates to um, my knowing the Nigros, um, graduated uh, Bishop Gorman High School in 1985 with Mike Nigro and his brother attended at that time, Todd Nigro. Um, don't have a social continuing relationship. Uh, however, I have disclosed that Mike Nigro um, had a construction company build out my husband's medical practice building years ago. Um, and so um, I do, I conclude there's nothing about that relationship that ended years ago, uh, that business relationship between my husband and, and uh, Mr. Mike Nigro uh, that would impede my uh, independence of, uh, or the independence of judgment of a reasonable person under these facts would not be materially affected by this uh, previous relationship. Um, it's not a case where I feel I need to disqualify as a conflict of interest and therefore I'm voting in this matter. Thank you for reminding me. Um, Todd's not standing here and Mike's not standing here, so I for I forgot. Nigro. Excellent. Um, so, Dennis Skowalt with the law firm of McDonald Carano. Uh, with your permission, I'll give a very brief affirmative presentation regarding this request for a condition modification, and we can go from there. Thank you. Uh, Todd's kind of Todd Nigro has scaled back his holdings, his general holdings, and is taking a more active role in the various distilled properties that he already has. There was a condition that was placed on the license some time ago that uh, there's two area managers, each with uh, eight machines, eight, eight locations to cover. Uh, the operations manager was supposed to also get licensed uh, to oversee those individuals. Todd would like to play a more active role uh, in when the when they're replacing an op operations manager and so he'd like to step in right now for a while the expectation is that an operations manager will be in at some point later but for now he'd like to oversee the property and that's why we've asked for this condition okay pretty straightforward um do we have any questions or comments i really like the breakdown that we received in our materials it was very precise um, 55 percent working with the area managers 25 percent with on-site personnel and visiting locations and 20 percent working with hr the executive chef and accounting I love the precision it <laughs> left, a precise guy yes I, it <laughs> left nothing for me to ask so uh, thank you for that presentation and i i watched the board location as well so i, I have no other questions okay we have no additional questions um, the applicant is currently in compliance with Conditions? Yes. Okay. So with that, is um, do any of my colleagues have a motion? I move for approval of rest uh, restricted item number six. I already turned the page, sorry. Yeah, number six is read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the Gaming Control Board. Okay. Um, and so uh, any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thanks well, for your patience today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam Secretary, could you please read in restricted number seven? Restricted number seven is the application of Woody's Entertainment Inc. doing business as Hangar Tavern for a waiver of the provisions of Nevada Gaming Commission Regulation 4.080 as noted on the agenda. 
the recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. It's still morning, so I'm going to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Togliati, Commission members, Executive Secretary. My name is Sally Amoyan. I am an enrolled agent uh, with the Nevada Gaming Control Board and Commission, and I'm here with Mr. Scott Tate, President of Woody's Entertainment. I assist Mr. Tate with applications and things of this nature, and this is a request for an additional um, waiver of Regulation 4080, and with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Tate as he will be able to uh, answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Tate. Hello. How are you guys today? We're doing Seems very pretty well. Busy. Thank you. <laughs> Seems pretty busy. <laughs> Thanks for running a very efficient meeting, though. I'm impressed how uh, speedily you've gone through the agenda today. Uh, this Thank you. application is uh, quite simple. We've uh, experienced some challenges from a construction standpoint, timing standpoint, but we believe that uh, this project is now underway and we'll be able to achieve our, our goal. And uh, as you can see, the the uh, the application is is go through nine months through March of next year, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have, any and all. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and open it up to my colleagues for any questions they might have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, no question, just a comment. Uh, watching the Gaming Control Board meeting earlier in the month, um, I appreciate the conversations that were had and delays potentially with construction, et cetera. And, but I, I want to uh, give a shout out to the board for accommodating and, and suggesting that additional three month period, you know, into March uh, to make sure that uh, the needs that you have can be met within that timeline and, and, and uh, not be um, under such a gun, if you will. Uh, and that what would normally be a December six month extension, but I, I fully support the application. Any other questions or comments? I had a quick question. Hi, this is Commissioner Brown. Thank you for appearing today and for your patience. I know it's um, interesting to watch, but it, it is uh, still a long process. I, I'm not clear on the timeline in terms of what's happening with Shaheen Beauchamp Builders. I know they're experiencing difficulties um, with getting the plans approved by the Carson City building officials. At the board presentation, I heard or understood that there were, might need about a month for approval. Is that a date set that's certain for the approval for the plans by the Carson City building officials, or could you just give me a bit of specificity? I'm not understanding the timeline. Yes, I am. Thank you for asking that question. And there is no date specific. <clears throat> it's a very challenging environment. Uh, the plans were submitted formally and fees paid. I believe the day or prior to the board meeting, uh, uh, Ms. Aloyan inquired as the status of that. I actually inquired of that a couple of days ago. We have not heard from the Carson City building officials. We expect, uh, you know, based on experience, we expect comments uh, this week, next week at the latest. Uh, but again, a lot of people are really backed up and, and their projects up here and uh, everywhere. And, and, and it's just a little bit of a challenge. But we don't anticipate any, any uh, significant uh, comments and hurdles associated with this project. It's more of just kind of getting in the pipeline and, and moving through it. And so if you could just clarify, when were those plans submitted to Carson City building officials? Now, I don't have the exact date, but it was the date prior to the Gaming Control Board meeting. So approximately two weeks, 15 days ago. Okay, thank you. And then to the extent there's approval from the Carson City uh, building officials, it's my understanding that you'll need about 90 days from that date forward to complete construction. Is that an accurate timeline? That is their estimate. Uh, and that is the general, uh, Shaheen Beecham is the general contractor for this project. And of course, they, they operate with several subcontractors uh, whom they've been in contact with, but on various projects. Uh, but I can't pine on the exactness of that 30, of that 90 days. Okay, but then you do believe standing here today that the March 2024 timeline will be sufficient. Is that correct? I do believe that is reasonable, yes, ma'am. Okay, good, good. And then I understand that you've also exceeded the projected remodeling cost by more than double. Can, can you tell me what the 
the big ticket items were that caused you to more than double your projections? Is it just uh, increased costs you didn't anticipate when you prepared the budget in the first instance? Right. It's been a very challenging environment. Costs increased, I believe, as every, everyone knows, uh, and whatever their projects are, or labor costs, uh, even running the board, uh, it, it's just a very challenging environment finding capable, competent personnel and materials. However, the material situation has really tend to uh, free up quite a bit in the last six to 12 months. We, we do a number of projects in our company, um, but I, it's just it's quite fascinating, uh, to be honest with you, what things cost uh, today. Uh, and I don't have really a, a, a great explanation of it. I mean, we have a detailed uh, budget for each line item, uh, you know, electrical costs, the cost to build a, a restroom nowadays, is, it's quite substantial, uh, the cost associated with that. Electrical, of course, is important uh, and have to have sufficient uh, electrical service, but it's just expensive. I mean, uh, you know, we used to do projects like this. 15 years ago for a hundred thousand dollars and this is north of four hundred thousand dollars so it's it's just it's a little mind-boggling equally um i had a guy bid to replace my windows in my home yesterday for eighty thousand dollars a house which i bought 27 years ago for a hundred and seventy thousand dollars so i'm just a little lost on the comments <laughs> it's just expensive well, thank you for sharing that. I just uh, wanted to make sure that um, you're on course to finish everything and based on what you've explained in detail, which I appreciate. Uh, I am not concerned about you getting this project finished. It's just a waiting game and it's simply nothing more you can do than to wait for the officials to reach out to you. So I wish, I wish you luck and I, I see no reason why I should not support this application. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your understanding and support of the application. And if there's one thing Scott Tate's learned in the last three years, that's patience. Uh, it is just, it's very challenging to move through processes nowadays. And uh, if you're not equipped for that, you probably need to find something else to do. It's just a challenging environment. We're going to, but we're going to get through it. And I think things are getting <laughs> a lot better. I know that. You have a, you have a good attitude. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, Yes, we're going to have a motion at this time. I would uh, like to move for approval for restricted item number seven as read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by, for approval by the Gaming Control Board. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you very much for being here today and making this appearance and answering our questions. And um, good luck with the project. We're rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you for your support and service to the state of Nevada. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, now is uh, we've been we just crossed into the afternoon and we're going to take a short restroom break and then we're going to come back five and minutes or 10 minutes pardon me five or 10 minutes um five to 10 minutes <laughs> if we can do it in five great but <laughs> might be a line uh thank you
Can I talk a little about something else? Sure. Looks like you're back at the desk. We're back on the record for continuation of the meeting. Uh, thank you for your patience. Madam Secretary, if you could please read in our next item. Next for your consideration is one gaming employee registration appeal. That item is David Wu, case number 2018-8260L. Mr. Wu, please. Okay, I'll call him shortly. Thank you. Madam Secretary, could you please read in the next item, stipulation for settlement? Next for your consideration, you have a stipulation for settlement and order settling the complaint filed in the matter of Nevada Gaming Control Board versus S&P Gaming Inc. doing business as the watering hole, Peter Lawrence Lusich III and Diane Kessler Lusich, case number 23-03. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay. Um, if, if I could, uh, Senior Deputy Attorney General, um, <coughs> could you make your appearance on this case? Uh, thank you, Chair Tagliati. Good afternoon, Chair Tagliati, members of the Commission, Madam Secretary, members of the Board. For the record, I am John McKella of the Attorney General's Office. And then um, I see uh, two of you in Carson City, if you could state your appearances for the record. My name is Peter Lusich. And Diane Lusich. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for being here today. Uh, Council, if you want to, if you wouldn't mind summarizing what we're doing here today with this uh, item. Uh, thank you, Chair Tagliati. <laughs> I have a stipulation for your consideration that would settle a complaint filed by the board against S&P Gaming Incorporated doing business as the watering hole. Peter Lawrence Lusich III and Diane Kessler Lusich. This complaint flows from two transfers of interest made prior to commission approval and the filing of erroneous NGC 09. Through the settlement, respondents admit each and every violation alleged in the complaint. This settlement resolves the complaint by respondents agreeing to pay a fine in the amount of $2,000. This is in line with prior fines for similar matters. That is my presentation on this issue for you today. If the commission has any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I ask the commission to approve the stipulation for settlement. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I will open it up for any questions or comments by my colleagues. Um, Commissioner Quilicki, you have anything? Yes, I, I, I do. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and thank you, Mr. McCullough. You know, more of it is just a, a, a learning opportunity for me. Um, I heard you just say that it was the fine amount was a similar uh, size as past incidents, but is there a how how do we do that? And I noticed the next item is similarly uh, uh, fined, if you will, or suggested. To be. Um, is there a formula of some kind that you use when you you do this, or you know, how do you come about with with the amount? Uh, there, there's no set formula. Um, what I do is I remove, I, I review uh, historical complaints and fines. Um, for this one, I looked at about the last 20 ish years for similar complaints and found a range of $500 to $5,000 with a few outliers. And the outliers were different than this because they had multiple locations involved and or other violations. Thank, thank you. I mean, that, that answers my, my question. It's just, you know, I, 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 I do, I try to avoid discretion in, in a regulatory role or government role. And as long as these numbers can be defended and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm comfortable, but, but thank you. And I appreciate your hard work on this. Any additional questions or comments? No. Um, and um, I don't know if, if um, if in Carson City you have anything you, you want to say, but I think um, it's pretty straightforward and we're inclined to, well, at least I'll speak for myself before I call for a motion, inclined to support this settlement. So, um, so do you have anything to add? No, we don't. 
Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, does someone have a motion? Um, Madam Chair, I'm happy to move for approval of the stipulation for settlement and order regarding SP Gaming Inc. as uh, presented by, um, is it Chief Deputy? Uh, senior DAG. Or Senior DAG McKellar. Thank you. Did I get that right? Senior DAG. Uh, yes, Senior DAG. Okay. Always get confused. Your uh, title on your screen is cut off by um, us looking at ourselves. <laughs> that's, that's why I can't see it. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, all right. Any discussion on the motion? There being none. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Just one point of clarification. I note that in the stipulation and settlement order, it identifies respondents in the plural. So I just, in the avoidance of that, want to make sure it's s and Gaming Inc. doing business as a watering hole, Mr. and Mrs. Lusich. Okay, thank you. No, no, no worries. Thank you. So it's case number 23-03 uh, for the record. And any discussion on the motion? There being no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you for making your appearance in case we had any questions today. Um, and it's been approved. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Okay. Because you're uh, senior DAG, you're already uh, rolling along. I'm going to go ahead and move to our next uh, item um, and ask Madam Secretary to read that in. Um, Next for your consideration, you have a stipulation for settlement and order settling the complaint filed in the matter of Nevada Gaming Control Board versus Tahoe Nugget Inc. doing business as Jim Kelly's Tahoe Nugget, case number 23-05. Thank you. Senior Dag, you want to go ahead and, and make the record that uh, you similarly made on the previous item? Uh, thank you, Chair Tagliati. And good afternoon, Chair Tagliati, members of the Commission, Madam Secretary, members of the Board. For the record, I am John McKellar of the Attorney General's Office. And if I'm not mistaken, um, e either or both Jim Kelly and Jeff Kelly, the principals of the Tahoe Nugget, are on Zoom. There was somebody there previously, and I think he may have just uh, dropped off. That was counsel from last item. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kelly is connected. Okay. There he is. Hi, Mr. Kelly. We can't hear you, just so you know. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. We can hear you now. Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Jeff Kelly. Okay. Uh, thank you. And was there anyone else appearing with you today? Is It's just you today? It's just me. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so. And, and I have a brief uh, summary of the complaint, if you would like, Madam Chair. Please. Okay. Uh, I have a stipulation for your consideration that would settle a complaint filed by the board against Tahoe Nugget Incorporated doing business as Jim Kelly's Tahoe Nugget. This complaint started as an order to show cause concerning the board's inability to contact the Tahoe Nugget concerning some gaming employee registration issues. Based on the Tahoe Nugget's response to the OSC, the board conducted a supplemental investigation and found additional gaming employee registration issues and found that patrons and members of the general public would have trouble contacting the Tahoe Nugget unless they visited the location in person. The initial issues from the OSC and the issues discovered in the supplemental investigation indicated that the licensee may have ongoing issues with gaming compliance. Because of this, the board filed a complaint. The most important part of this proposed settlement is the condition. The condition requires the Tahoe Nugget to retain a compliance officer approved by the board. This condition is an attempt by the board to ensure the Tahoe Nuggets current issues with gaming compliance end now, and the board is not forced to file serial complaints against the Tahoe Nugget. The proposed settlement also imposes a $2,000 fine. That is my presentation on this issue for you today. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I ask the commission to approve the stipulation for settlement. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and open it up to my colleagues for any questions or comments at this time. 
Hello, and thank you for coming today. Just a few questions. Um, I, I know that there were some issues regarding no response to emails. Has that been remedied since the complaint was filed? I believe those, it was uh, a non-response to a, a phone cover, uh, phone call. Uh, I also received Brown. in my materials that board the board sent emails and that there were no responses. Is that not accurate? Uh, yes. That's not to my, oh. Yeah, Commissioner Brown, um, at the order to show cause level, uh, there were non-responses to emails and phone calls, and it took an actual physical visit to the property by an enforcement agent to prompt, prompt responses. Uh, since that time, um, it's my understanding that the nugget has been responsive to emails and more or less phone calls. Thank you. I appreciate that. And also, I know that even though there was a new number because the other number was problematic, that there was no website created to actually locate that number. Um, is, has that since been remedied? It has. Okay. And then I note from the materials that the gaming employee registration application was still not submitted to the board as of September 22nd, 2022. Has that since been remedied? Um, can you repeat that? Have you submitted a gaming employee registration application since September 22nd, 2022, sir? I believe all are, if it's the um, week, or I'm sorry, monthly uh, new hire reports, those have all been completed. And okay. all gaming employees are uh, licensed or registered with the Nevada Gaming Control Board. Thank you and so much for answering Brown. my questions. I, yes, I sir. I can confirm um, it's my understanding that they're up to date on all gaming employee registration issues. Okay, excellent. I don't have any further questions. It appears that noncompliance with the registration requirements has been remedied and uh, the fine at $2,000 is acceptable to me. I have no further questions. Thank you both. Commissioner Solis Rainey. Yes, I just had one quick question with respect to the condition that um, the property in uh, hire a compliance officer. Is there a time frame that you're contemplating for that person to be on board? I didn't see we've, it in the materials. We've uh, we've hired a full time uh, audit uh, position and as far as we've hired a part time. Uh, we uh, employee who was he had over 30 years of gaming audit and enforcement he retired from you from uh, the gaming control board I believe eight years ago um, and we've retained him for three years as a part-time uh, employee to come in uh, at least once a week to um, for compliance issues. And Dag McKella, is that uh, the is the part-time hiring of that person sufficient in your mind to comply to, to comply with the condition that is being imposed? Uh, thank you. It didn't say if it was part-time or full-time, so I wasn't sure. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Solis Rainey. Um, the enforcement division has looked at this. It is a, a former long time agent of the gaming control board, and this is a, a fairly small property. So it's my understanding that this would be sufficient. Okay, thank you so much. My question was also on the compliance officer. Uh, Mr. Kelly, thank you for, for being here. Um, <laughs> Thank you for communicating. It's an interesting story, you know, how you got in front of us. Um, but I think you said, I, you originally said you'd hire somebody full-time. Um, I understand that a part-time compliance person should be adequate for the size of your property, but could you just clarify? I think you use both full-time, part-time references. Yes, we've hired a, a full-time employee. She's actually my niece, uh, Megan Kelly. Uh, she is, I believe, 24 years old and um, has shown interest in uh, 
following in her father's footsteps, I guess. Uh, and it was going to start in uh, working under him uh, in doing audit, um, audit work for the Nugget and being in charge of HR. Um, so, but she is, she, she doesn't know the duties that need to be done for an audit work. So having um, our compliance officer uh, is working out uh, fantastic for us. Um, him showing up and working with her on a weekly basis. And, and thank you, Mr. Kelly, for that clarification. I, I, I missed that we were speaking about two different individuals uh, coming on, on board. Not now, uh, now it's clear. Thank you for the explanation. You're welcome. I don't have any uh, additional uh, questions. Um, I appreciate your parents here today, and I think that um, that it's clear from what our sen the senior DAG is telling us is that the issues have been satisfactorily resolved. And so at this time, um, if there's a motion to um, approve the stipulation for settlement, I'm going to support it. Madam Chair, I would move for approval of the stipulation for settlement and order in case number NGC 23-05, uh, Nevada Gaming Control Board versus Tahoe Nugget, Inc., DVA Jim Kelly's Tahoe Nugget. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor, say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you uh, very much for being here today. And um, we appreciate your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Both of you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go back now, if I could, to have Madam Secretary please read in the uh, Gaming Employee Registration Appeal matter. Next for your consideration is one Gaming Employee Registration Appeal. That item is David Wu, case number 2018-8260L. Mr. Wu. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Wu. I represent myself uh, for the hearing here. Um, well, let me do let me do this. Okay. Okay. Um, I always take a minute to um, kind of give you um, our perspective of how this proceeding should go. Um, first, you should know that we are in receipt of all the materials that um, that brings you here today, um, including but not limiting to your uh, April fourth. Um, and that's the date it was filed. You, you, you actually signed it on March 27th. Um, it's a six page, um, it's entitled Seeking Gaming Commission Review, De Review Denial of Gaming Card Gaming Regulation 5.109. So we have that. Uh, we have the Gaming Control Board's materials um, as well as the transcript typed out transcript of the hearing that you had. And so uh, we review all of that before you get here, uh, obviously, so that we can be informed while we listen to you. Um, and you should understand that the, the um, rules of this proceeding and the legal constraints or the limitations that we have are that we are limited to what was available and considered at the time of your hearing. Does I that make sense? And, and so, um, so to the extent you want to go outside of that with additional evidence, for example, we can't do that. I okay. realize that. Okay, perfect. Well, I always want to just, you know, if I interrupt you or I say we can't do something, I want you to know why and not just because, no, not at all. you know, I like to be overbearing or something. Okay, so, um, so. Thank you for being here today and for your patience. Um, we're here to uh, hear from you on your um, um, review of the denial. Well, I submit all the evidence and also I try to analyze everything. And obviously I serve the gaming board, the final, the last instant seal court order. However, 
for my recollection, I checked with them. They never have one, although I have the proof of service, certified mail. <clears throat> and also in the decision deny my application, make a very specifically on the remark, on the first denial, I was failing to list my arrest record. On the appeal hearing, on the second page, the hearing officer very specific, uh, specifically marked down and look, I failed to list my arrest record, even although <clears throat> I obtained the seal record and I served them certified mail. I proved with the track record you, the post officer, deliver it here. But when I checked uh, verbally, they denied that they have uh, such record. And also at the last hearing, I asked the examiner more than three times. I told her, my English is not good because I'm not, uh, my mother language is a Chinese. And I read the court order to them. <clears throat> I read specifically what is the mean deem to never been occur mean. So I said, for my understanding, that means we recounted, as I wrote it, that thing never been happened. Shall I answer yes or shall I answer no? Okay? I said, I tried to search it. Case law, I cannot find it. But if you find it from the dictionary, Lever, lever, what I mean, lever. Seem to occur, right? And also, I served uh, the giving board, the seal order, particularly the court order indicated they supposed to reply to the court and comply with the court order. I have uh, all the other fee agent send me the reply letter. I don't know why. And also, for the last, uh, the indicator, fee instant, not the last one. The last one is the number in today's uh, hearing. First one, had a theft. I pre low contest, 5200. I sue the record. Since then, I have my gaming card working all the through until the 2017. And then another instant, they said I was arrest. Yes or no? I was handcuffed by the gaming board, but was questioned. I wasn't prosecuted and released right after they released my handcuff in the, what you call them, a room in the casino. Security room? Yeah, and then that's it, nothing. The third instant, the district attorney, insufficient evidence, <clears throat> denied it to prosecute. And then I have, I wait a few years, I seal the record. The, Court order split itself. I don't understand why the last hearing officer keep asking me how you feel the seal record. Actually, the case was adjudicated. Nobody appealed. Okay? And then the court order split itself. And I don't understand why she keep asking me. And then when she said, 
Mr. Wu, you are not this thing. You are arrest record. And then I keep asking the examiner more than three times. Please explain it to me what the court order means. She never indicated and tell me the answer. And so what can I do? I followed the, my best effort to try to do everything. But I don't know, is it prejudice or she refused to tell me the interpretation of the court order. I asked her, shall I answer yes or no? If I follow the court order, the civil court order, it's a very common order. And I assume all of you know what is said. Then that's the basic. What is trigger? They deny my application. Was I failed to listen my arrest record? But however, the case was denied to prosecute, and I also the seal the record. I don't know why my application is a denied. Can I ask Especially, you a can I ask you a question for a second? I've read a lot of the materials, and I'm certainly going to give you the opportunity to finish. But I think I I need to understand one thing. I can't quite figure out from everything you write and everything that you say and everything that you said at the hearing whether um, you are saying. I should have disclosed it, but I didn't because of the court order and I understood the court order a certain way, or whether you're saying I shouldn't have to disclose it because of the court order. I'm still not sure. So can you- I don't think I have to disclose it. Okay, thank because you. Because the court order very clearly is set. All proceedings. You don't have to read it to us okay. again, okay? Because we have the court order. Okay. We've read it. We've read what you wrote. And yeah. respectfully, I can't let you go on for an hour. You've said the same thing repeatedly. So if you have something new to say, we're, I want you to finish. And I'm not going to limit you in any way. But please don't keep reading us the language of the court order. Okay? okay. You know what it and, says. And uh, that's about it. Because in two denial letter, they never indicated the gaming control board have the court order. And they repeatedly in two denial letter, yes, was a saying, I don't listen to my arrest record. Okay. Okay. Now, the part about this proceeding that I didn't explain in advance that I probably should have, is there's gonna be kind of two discussion portions, if you will. There's going to be a discussion portion where any commissioner can ask you questions sure. and engage in a dialogue with you. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be a motion made at some point, I think, if we're going to get to an end of today. When that happens, the discussion occurs with us and doesn't involve you. So... Uh, I just want you to know that because I've had some of these where there's a little bit of a, a misunderstanding on the procedure. And, um, and so this will be the part where I open it up to questions for you uh, by all of my colleagues and uh, myself. I'm going to withhold any comments or questions and just open it up, starting with whoever would like to start if you have any questions. I had just a, I had a quick question, Mr. Wu, because I'm I'm a little confused um, on a couple of things that you've you said and you stated it repeatedly. You said that you asked the examiner whether or not to list it on your application. Yeah, because I'm under the court order. I understand the court order. Yeah. I'm not confused okay. about the court order. Yeah. I'm under, I'm confused about you saying that you asked the examiner. The examiner wouldn't have not wouldn't have been involved when you're when you were completing your gaming card application. So who is it that you think? I don't have anything in the record, and and if it's outside the record, we can't consider it. So, but for my understanding, for the court order, shall I answer the yes or no? For my understanding, I sh should 
answered no. But instead, the examiner give me the expression is I should answer yes. That is correct. That if the, gaming is a privilege in the state of Nevada, it's a little bit different than maybe other applications you may be completing. It's asking if you have been arrested. If you have, you were arrested, you don't dispute that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And your contention is only that it was sealed, so you didn't list it because it was sealed. No, not only sealed, but the court order is it itself. That's why I asked an interpretation of the court order. But you're asking for that interpretation after the fact. You're asking the hearing officer. It's not something that happened when you filled out your gaming, the form that you fill out to get your gaming license, your gaming card, work card. But the court order was a issue before I filled the application. I understand that. I understand the timing and I understand what the court order says. Mm -hmm. What I didn't understand and I now do is that it seemed like you were saying that you were that at the time you filled your work card application, you asked an agent at that time, and that doesn't seem to be the case. You're only you only asked the hearing examiner that dealt with the revocation. That's correct. Okay, that's all I needed to get clear yeah, in my mind. Because it, that's a, so confused for most of us after the red court order and then the fill the application. That's the only question I have. Okay. If uh, that's the case, do the legislator, legislation that, and then they change it, regardless what, you must list uh, or the question shall be changed the wor wording. You must list all the arrest record, regardless, have been sealed or not. Well, respectfully, that's not what you said earlier. You said I shouldn't have to because the court order says I, I shouldn't. Remember when I asked you that question? I asked you, are you saying that you didn't do it and that if you had known you would have done it or you didn't have to do it? And you said, I didn't have to do it because the court order says what you've read. For my understanding, yes. Okay. Commissioner Krolicki, do you have anything? Um, thank you, Mr. Wu, for being here. And I, I know this has been an ordeal. Um, I was yielding to my attorney colleagues because some of this is uh, familiar territory for you and certainly for you, Your Honor. Um, reading the transcript of your interview with Agent Massey, who I thought did a, a marvelous job, but I could see the frustration between you throughout that transcript. And, uh, you know, and, and just listening to you now, it still appears to me that, and if I'm understanding it correctly, that while the record is sealed, the fact that it's a gaming application, there was an exemption in state law because of the gaming privilege that the gaming commission and the gaming control board would have access to that information. So I think you think something is perhaps sealed and gone forever, uh, perhaps for housing or, or other matters, non-gaming related, if, if I have that correct, but not for gaming related issues. Uh, do you understand that? I fully understand that, but just like a common person, if uh, when you fill the application and then uh, you read the court order, I just wonder what the common person not working in the gaming commission or gaming board, what usually they will do. Okay. And and just another point, and, and you please feel welcome to respond, but you know, I, I feel like we're caught in this loop of what you're supposed to disclose. <laughs> And not, you know, your your conduct and behavior, you know, inside the gaming industry is also something that we must consider if we were to, you know, overrule or, you know, how we consider your past conduct. So there is conduct here and you're not disputing that. You're disputing the fact that you know, it has to be disclosed. So I, I I think I'm comfortable, but do you, do you have anything to add to what I, I just said about your conduct 
mean, you uh, have been arrested. You weren't prosecuted, but uh, but I was deny those actions. Then, then, uh, just like if uh, you were stopped by the highway patrol, they handcuff you. Oh, they said mistake. Release you. Do you agree you have been arrested? We don't really answer questions. So I just have yeah. for instance. Yeah. If it's a I hypothetical, I realize that. rhetorical question, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, I realize that, but I just, just have just put one a instance. Other point. I, I know multiple records have been sealed, but I do believe there was one incident that was not sealed, um, if, if, if I'm correct. So um, you were still, the, the item that was sealed should have been disclosed, in, in, in my opinion. I mean, do you agree that there was a record not, I think, Agent Massey pointed that out. I don't have the date in front of me. But on the other hand, I have a water gaming card. After the 2000 something, I worked at the plus for about 10 years. Okay? If I feel the application about, about, as my recollection is every time it's about the same. Do I make the mistake and then I wasn't discovered by the gaming board? Or the gaming board make the mistake, overlooked it, and then I follow my previous application, the same answer. Thank you. Mr. Wu, thank you for coming today. I appreciate your explanation. I read the transcript very carefully. And it appears to me that you're placing a lot of emphasis on your misinterpretation of the question, have you ever been arrested? The answer as you stand here today is yes, you've been arrested, correct? That's correct. We've got a court order. I understand. Yeah. But when I ask you, have you been arrested? Your answer is? Yes. Period. Okay. I can understand you misinterpreting that question. So I'm going to put that aside. I'm not even focusing on that. I'm focusing on the other conduct that was presented to us on the record from your hearing on January 26, 2023. So don't, don't worry so much about you got it wrong or we got it wrong in terms of your interpretation of the order. Your interpretation is simply wrong and you should have disclosed it. Should you have consulted with somebody, a lawyer, called somebody, 20 things you could have done. The point is it was the wrong interpretation, I'm telling you now, and that is not the end of my inquiry. I can set that aside and understand why you might think it wasn't clear. So let's move forward. My concern is when I read the transcript from your hearing on January 26, 2023, a number of red flags went up for me. And I can compartmentalize your misinterpretation of the order. It's simply incorrect. I can move past that. So I'm concerned when I looked at the transcript on page eight, lines 21 through 25, the Venetian noted seven cheating instances by you and the Gaming Control Board confirmed two cheating instances. That is problematic for me. That is troubling. On page nine, the first incident related to you bending cards. That is problematic for me. There was another incident relating to the wager where you failed to collect a losing wager and the player lost $10,000 and showed you he showed you his cards. That is very problematic for me. What's also problematic for me is on page 24 of your transcript, your interpretation is if you don't benefit, if you, Mr. Wu, don't benefit, it's not cheating. That is a problem for me as a gaming commissioner. And your request for a privileged position to work in the gaming industry, that is very troubling for me. On page 25 of the transcript, there was testimony about giving one player advice and not another player advice to maybe give somebody advantage with a game of chance. That is not ideal. On page 36 of your transcript, I was very troubled about your understanding of cheating. It seems very blurry. And your definition of cheating is simply not in line with the Nevada Revised Statute 465083. It's, it's simply not. If you alter the game of 
of chance and you see nothing wrong with it, I don't see, based on the testimony, which is all I'm confined to, that you're reformed, that you've understood and that you've changed and you understand that that thinking about cheating and that blurry line that you have, I don't see that anything has changed based on the transcript and the record before me. And most troubling to me on page 40 of the transcript, there's no proof of cheating, then there's no cheating. So I can get past the order and your clear misinterpretation. It's simply wrong. Have you been arrested is the question. The answer is yes. You answered it wrong. I'm over it. I understand you can, you know, pound your fist and explain why you misunderstood it. And you ask, you know, why is it clear or something about the legislature? You answered it incorrectly. I'm done with that. I can move past that. But if I look at the record and see all of these other issues that give me grave concern and pause, I am not comfortable overruling the recommendation of the board. So I understand the record. I understand your position. We have all read the order. You misinterpreted the order, and that is simply not the end of my inquiry. So there's nothing I've heard from you today that gives me the comfort to overrule the objection, unfortunately. And I, I know you've waited all day here. I appreciate your time, but I'm simply not comfortable. Thank you. Okay. When I can get a decision. Right now. No. In writing. One moment. Um, and may I uh, adjust to the commissioners? Would you issue a finding of a fact and conclusion of the law, or in the alternative, statement of a decision? Here's the thing. Um, part of our job is not to advise you legally. Uh, the questions you're using are terms of art I'm very familiar with, and I understand your plans for appeal, but right now we're doing our process, and I'm not going to advise you on, on anything other than what we're doing while we're doing it, okay? So right now, if you have anything to add before there's a No, motion, I don't. Okay? Could you let me finish? Thank you. Uh, I know it's hard, but because there's a court reporter you can't even see doing this, while we're talking, um, she's up, she's in another location. And so um, it's hard when you're cutting off uh, Commissioner Kurlicki and speaking over each other, she can't get the transcript that you're gonna need for your appeal. So, or your petition for judicial review. So um, I appreciate it. Um, if you don't have anything to add, then I'm going to inquire of my uh, colleagues if someone has a motion, then there will be a motion made and then we will have a process, okay? Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have a motion? Yes, I move to sustain the Nevada Gaming Control Board's objection to Mr. Wu's registration as a gaming employee. All right, discussion on the motion. Um, I think, um, you know, I appreciate um, Mr. Wu's position. I do have concerns about some of his unusual beliefs um, and I, you know, related to the definition of cheating and that kind of thing. But the gist of it is, you know, he disagrees with um, his obligations and the form. Um, and, you know, the other issues that were raised at the hearing are, are pretty clear. So for me, I'm aligned with uh, Commissioner Brown and I will be supporting that motion. I also um, support the the motion. The I think there's, like Commissioner Brown said, I do understand his confusion on it, but I don't understand him just not answering the question correctly, and I don't understand the other conduct. Um, the a person's own view of what constitutes cheating is and what governs in a regula regulated environment. Um, so with the concerns I have with respect to his views on what constitutes or doesn't constitute cheating and uh, what um, governs his obligation to respond to the questions on the application correctly, I would support the application to uh, sustain the objection. Mr. Wu, uh, again, I appreciate your frustrations with all of this, but as we've said, this aiming uh, work cards are privilege and 
Commissioner Brown, I really appreciate how you went through the detail that again didn't she got beyond your issue of whether or not to disclose. It really comes down to a matter of conduct. And uh, candidly, I don't think you've earned that privilege uh, demonstrated on your past conduct and reaffirmed in the transcript that we have in front of you. So I will also be supporting the motion. All right. Um, so if there's no additional comments or um, commentary by the commission, um, I would ask for um, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 And there are none opposed, so it's unanimous. So uh, as far as the um, question that Mr. Wu had, which now that we're completed with our, our procedure, um, he wants to know how this um, decision is documented. Um, and I would defer to the, um, which by the way, he does have the ability to um, request um, in a year, correct? Five years. Five years. Five years. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Um, Unless we make it short. So can you tell me um, in answer to his question? I believe he'll receive a, a letter from the board. Executive Secretary Rupert, is that correct? Yes, he will receive a letter from my office confirming the events that happened here and what his options are. Okay, so um, and for <clears throat> his <clears throat> comfort level, there'll be a transcript. So you can, I don't know how soon or quickly, but it's, it's she's pretty, pretty good um, and turns over these transcripts pretty quickly. So um, if that information is not in the letter, um, then you can contact um you can contact them and ask them when that transcript would be available for you. So you'll have every single word of this hearing available for any uh, court review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Secretary, could you please um, close? Uh, I'm sorry, next on our agenda is the administrative reports. Let's start with Chair Hendrick. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair Tagliati. First of all, please allow me to thank you for all of your assistance with the recent legislative session. The board's budgets were ultimately passed by the legislature as well as the commission's budget. And the commission was allocated, as you know, a very reasonable amount of money to adequately perform the commission's duties. So thank you to you personally, and thank you to everyone who helped the board with the recent legislative session. Regarding next month's board agenda, the board is scheduled to have a one-day meeting in Carson City on July 9th. Uh, we're tentatively anticipating nine non-restricted items beginning at nine o'clock and then 10 restricted items beginning at one o'clock. That would conclude my report for this morning. Thank well, you. thank you. And um, we appreciate you being up there with your, with your team um, and the, the 24 seven monitoring <laughs> that, that you had to do um, to, to get what it is that we all need to function. So thank you for that. Um, I've been correct. Apparently I said July 9th, that'd be Sunday. We will not be meeting on mm -hmm. Sunday. Okay, good. We're meeting July 12th. July 12th. Wednesday and the 12th. Jose, we do appreciate um, all you did during the session for all of us. Thank you. Again, employee of the month. <laughs> Does that get you a parking spot? Uh, how about from the AG's office today? Nothing today, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Secretary, if we could close with our last agenda item, public comments. This item is placed on the agenda to give the public an opportunity to comment on gaming-related matters. I'll first go to Carson City. Is there anyone present in Carson City who wishes to make public comment? It appears there is not. Is there anyone here in Las Vegas? It appears there is not. Uh, that will close our public comment section and this concludes the Nevada Gaming Commission meeting for the month of June. Oh, I did wanna state that we are also having our meeting next month in Northern yeah. Nevada. So if there's any uh, Southern uh, commissioner who for any reason wishes to appear uh, um, 
via Zoom, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you. I'll see you in the north. We'll see you in the north. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.